In the history of international hockey, one of the all-time great programs was in the former Soviet Union. Tonight, they are Russia, and they take on Team USA. For Ron Wilson and Team USA, it's back to the drawing board. The United States takes on Russia in hopes of rebounding from their loss against Canada Tuesday night. The Americans are going to have to play tough up against a high-powered Russian offense. It's time to renew an old rivalry. U.S. and Russia collide next, ESPN2. What a place to renew a great rivalry, the state of hockey. Welcome, everybody. Minneapolis, Minnesota. And yes, the United States and Russia meeting for the first time in our World Cup play. With Jeremy Roenick and Bill Clement, I'm Gary Thorne. Bill, we take a look at a Soviet team, which has got a lot of names and a lot of firepower. Well, when you think of the Russian team, think of Russian rocket fuel. Think of high octane. I mean, this team is so loaded with firepower. That's what Team USA is going to be up against. And they are led by a youngster that plays for the Atlanta Thrashers named Ilya Kovalchuk. This summer, NHL players were asked to identify the best pure goal scorer in the NHL was Ilya Kovalchuk of the Atlanta Thrashers. On his line will also be one of the most dynamic players ever in the NHL from Russia, Alexei Kovalev. You put those guys together, and believe me, the list is far longer than just these two guys. It is absolutely about firepower with the Russians. And we take a look at Team USA. Jeremy, two questions coming into this game after losing to Canada. Would Modo be able to play, and would Esch start again? Well, the good news is, yes, Mike Madonna will play tonight. It hurt the Team USA very, very much the other day when Mike Madonna went out in the first period with an injury. He will play tonight. They need him to be on top of this game talent-wise, and just more importantly, being in the locker room, his presence is huge for USA. On the flip side, like I said the other day, Robert Esch, the number one star in game one versus Canada, he has to be good tonight. Because if he is not good tonight, this high-powered Russian team over there might run the USA off the, off the ice. So let's go Robert Esch again tonight. This is a Russian team. Uh, it's really hard to tell exactly how good they are because this is going to be their first game in World Cup play this year. They are teammates in Detroit. Pavel Datsuk, who can get it done. He teams up with Chelios. They both play tonight, but they are not teammates. Welcome back to the Toyota pregame show. Barry Melrose, David Amber, great to have you along. They're almost set to drop the yep. puck in Minnesota. First of all, we got to talk about this matchup. USA and Russia, both those teams expected to do well, but both those teams coming in with the same question mark. And I think America answered their question mark, and that's goaltending. Robert Esch played great in game one, just like Jeremy said, but can he do it two games in a row, three games in a row? That is the question mark against Russia. Russia goaltending looked solid. You had Habi Bulin, you had Nabokov, both of them great, great NHL goaltenders. Habi Bulin would not come to the tournament, and Nabokov got hurt, so the Russians are going to go with unknowns in net, so that's a question mark for them. But the Russians have been terrible in international hockey since 1992. Once the great greatest power in the world in international hockey have really slipped basically because the players are very indifferent and they haven't really played hard in the tournament so far up to this point. Maybe this will change. they got younger players now uh, and we'll see if they can play with a little bit of heart and a little bit of fire tonight. We'll find out momentarily in yep. Minnesota. Earlier today we found out a lot about the Finnish team yep. looking very good once again. They haven't surrendered a goal so far in this tournament and Germany the victim today. Germany played very well today. The game was close. Uh, you see right here, they had some chances. They had a five on three for two minutes. That basically turned the game around. They didn't score. The Finns are great defensively. Timo Solani is their lead. Great shot there and a power play uh, for the Finnish side. They're very solid defensively. They're very solid without the puck. They pick people up, and they've been getting very, very good goaltending by Kiprasov. What a backhand by Yuri Lettinen and the Dallas Stars. This just does not happen anymore in the game, folks. What a rocket. Kolzig played well, but not enough. 3-0 is your final. Finland improves to a perfect 2-0 now, matching Sweden, who is also 2-0. It's going to be very interesting. Saturday night, baby, two. Saturday night. Going to be a great one there, and it's going to be a great one in a matter of moments in Minnesota. Speaking of great ones, Brett Hall. How incredible was this guy back in 96? He led all scores. Can he do it tonight for the U.S.? We'll find out next. ESPN 2's presentation of the Toyota World Cup of Hockey is brought to you by the Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. Welcome back, everybody. It will be a full house on hand here at the XL Center in Minneapolis as we get set to go for this opening game for Russia in this World Cup of Hockey and for the United States, a 2-1 loss in their opener in Montreal. That's the man who was in net, and it could have been a lot worse, but for Robert Nash. 
JR, you know Robert Esch as well as anybody. The older he gets, the more relaxed he seems to get in <laughs> situations. Well, I'll tell you what, this guy is, uh, is is old beyond his years. He just He's come in and for only having a starting lineup job for the last year, he shows the poise of a 10-year veteran. He's just really, he's in there, he's tight, he's, he's strong, and he's very well. And we don't know about the poise and the composure of this man because he's only ever started one NHL game. Ilya Brizgalov, he is property of the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Who? And he is uh, highly touted by Anaheim. They th thought enough of him to let Gerber go and uh, believe he's going to be in their future. So let's see how it cuts. As the United States in the red, white, and uh, blue, they do have names on their jersey. The dark uniforms being worn by Russia. And that'll be knocked away to the near side and out of the zone. Weinrich back on D. Fenisenkov moves it in. His first shot. And Ash dumped that one wide. Now, this is what uh, Russia is going to try and do in this game. Right away, you see the forwards charging. They know that the United States blue line is uh, a little shy uh, on thin right now because of injuries. So. Well, Ronnie Wilson, the head coach of Team USA, does not want to look out there and see a three-on-three three down low in his zone. What he wants to see is a five-on-three. So to help out those defensemen that may be a little small, maybe overmanned, they want to collapse and overload down low in their own end. Chelios got their good forechecking job to help uh, hold the puck. Garen will come back to pick this one up. Billy Garen will move it back, and uh, Russia will make a line change here. We'll get you the scratches in this game as Ken Clee is not going to be playing. Jeff Halpern, Paul Martin, Jamie Langenbrunner, and Brian Smolinski are all scratches for Team USA in this game. And obviously, as we mentioned, Mike Madano, who had the injury and had to come out of that game against Canada, is now back in action. Move back into the zone, Team USA. They're going to have to adjust a little bit here against this Russian team because even though they played them in a couple of scrimmages here regarding the World Cup, not really sure what this team is going to throw at him here in this game. Game back to center. Team USA has got Brian Leach out there in the defensive pairing. Again, they drop it back. Four checking. They're holding that four check at center. Jashin was out there. They hit on the far side on Vishnevsky as he got taken down and uh, moved back out of the zone. Dump in from center. Ash reached out, let it go by in behind the net. Kovalenko came back, centered it out in front, got the D moving in at a point. Shot and Ash has to deny. Vishnevsky with a chance. He was open. Pretty good play behind the net by the Russian tank, Andrei Kovalenko. He kept the play alive when it came back out to the point. Key there. You see Brian Leach standing to the side. Robert Esch was only screened out near the point, and by Robert Esch standards, that's a pretty easy save. Well, I'll tell that's you, by, it was. by knowing Robert Esch, he's told his defense before the game, make sure you get out from in front of the net. Let me see the puck. Because remember the goal, the second goal against Canadians went off a foot and he couldn't see it. So you know he told his defense to give him more room. Again, the interception held in. Got to Esch after it was blocked off the near side. Off the dump in by Volchenkov, who's working on defense. Line changes for the United States. We'll see a couple in this game, as it'll be Conroy, Kachuk, and Drury together. Gomez, Ralston, and Garen. Madano's got Hull and Conowalchuk. Wait, Amonti, and Blake are the lines that will start this game for Team USA. And Doug Wade is out there right now. Wait dumped it back in behind the net. Amonti sent it out into the middle, but didn't have anybody there. Second time a pass from down low like that by Team USA has backfired. And the one thing that will kill you against the Russians is turnovers. Look at the move by Datsuk. Set it up. Ash holding. Shot. Hit him in the pad. And he's got it underneath him. This is exactly what I said in the beginning of the game. These Russian guys are talented. Tatsu plays for Detroit. He might have had the prettiest goal I've ever seen last year. Watch the hands. You can't teach this, people. Look at it. Oh, my gosh. You can't toe-tuck a professional athlete like that. And then another great save as you played that perfectly. And JR, that, that started with Tony Amati trying to blindly center the puck out deep in the Russian zone. And that's what we talked about. There's Tony. And he will learn from the puck. He's from saying that. right he's, there, what am I thinking? Well, he's being told that, too. You can't do that against this Russian team. They are very fast. Oh. And Brian Ralston said the other night he thought the action in that game against Canada shot from the point got blocked and all the way down to the other end. Ralston thought it was faster than the Stanley Cup playoffs. He said that's about the fastest hockey that I've ever been involved in. Centering pass just deflected wide. Team USA got it down low, but it never did end up on net. Rizgalov had that one go wide of it. Circling in, if I get off back in behind the net, trying to tuck it in with one hand, couldn't do it. Got deflected to the near side. Boy, they're skating. Little haul down, um, more of a fall down than a haul down, and it'll be held by Team Russia into the corner. Knocked off the puck, Frolov. Was out of Frolov, number 24. 24 goals last season. Played back around the near side. Team USA having trouble getting it out. Edge had to knock it away again. 
Pretty good floor checking job right here by Team Russia. And Gary with the collapse, meaning that all, all players down around Robert Ez, the point men for Russia will be open for the shots in the blue line. Another shot, another save by Ez. Rebound bounced up in the air. Fedogenov cutting in at another opportunity. And you can see how this Russian team is getting through and around Team USA's defense. Well, good news, I think, for U.S. It looks like Ez is going to be on his game tonight. He's played every shot in perfect position. He's made a couple of big saves already, as he had to do with the other night. Team USA getting set up in front. That got deflected away, and it will be covered up for his Golov moving out after Brian Ralston. The puck just went behind him. Is there a better player in this tournament when you isolate guys one-on-one -on -one than the Russians, JR? Without a doubt, the Russians can control the puck with their sticks better than anybody in the whole world. You're going to see plays by them, toe tucks, through the sticks, through the legs, and they're going to try to go high every time they get in close. There's, there's nobody determined per team that has more talented guys in Russia. We, we were sitting up and watching them this morning, and it was amazing. And Sean Burke is here, a goaltender uh, that also plays with Jeremy Roenick. And uh, Sean Burke was just marveling at the Russians' ability to get into the paint and then put the puck off the crossbar. They are, they are quick. That'll be dumped back into the zone a little bit further. Aaron Miller had to come back to get it. Four nothing. The shots in favor of Russia early on in this game. They've had the chances at the four minutes into this first period. Madano's back out there. Connor Walchuk, the intended, that got blocked again. Good play made by Samsonov, and he can fly. Shot through the middle. That was really a setup, not a shot. They tried to get it over off the near side boards. Could not connect on it. But right now, Russia's flying a little bit. Madano, that a save made. Whereas Golov had to knock that one into the corner. Good set up by Connor Walchuk. The D backing up in the high man in the middle was Amati. That's what Team USA is doing to try and help out their blue line core. Is drop that centerman back, way back to the blue line, in order to help cover when Team Russia's coming out of the end. That got blocked in the corner, shot loose behind the net. Amazing part early on to me is the Team Russia's forecheck has been able to actually intercept the two pucks and hold them in. You know what, they actually trapped against Team USA in a pre-tournament game. There's no trap here. No, it's just work. As Alexei Yashin, 79. Yashin dumped it off on the far side. He's got Kavasha. Kavasha sends it off the back boards as it hit the side of the net. Yashin set up in front of the net. The D is open. The shot, that gets deflected wide. Gonshar plays for Washington Capitals. Is open again. There he is. One-timer. Gonshar save. Rebound. That deflected straight up in the air. Big chance by Zubras. And as Zubras shot again from the blue line. That one goes wide as Kasparaitis was wide open. Rebounded in. Esch trying to find it in the skate. And he does. Well, this is exactly what we don't want to happen for USA. They're just standing around right now. I think they're all just kind of wait, waiting to see what the Russians are going to come out and how they're going to be flying, how they're going to be moving, how energetic they're going to be. And right now, they're just really too flat in their own zone. And you see Eric Weiner, it's just kind of uh, just misses the puck behind him. But again, Eshi is just right, in, right in, in good position to get his foot on the post. This looks like uh, the game against Canada's first period a little yeah, bit, doesn't it? Does. it? Yeah, it does to me. I mean, this is Eshi against the world for a moment. Banned on that time by Kovalchuk as he was coming back into the middle. He had a pretty good chance there, too. Moved through center by John Michael Lyles. Lost it there. Another turnover. Team USA having trouble moving. That, that will kill him. The other thing Team USA has to do is get the puck in deep. Another interception down low. Set up and maybe one pass too many. Kovalenko open on the near side for a moment. They tried to get it to him and he got covered. But that created from another turnover. 14-03 left to go on a scoreless first. Well, this morning I talked to Coach Ron Wilson, and I know he was uh, he was very depressed about the game the other day against Canada. But he said the one thing that changed the whole thing was their physicalness. Watch for Keith Kachuk, Billy Guerin tonight. They have to make their phys physical play seen tonight because they're the ones that changed that whole game the other day against Canada. Watch them to be physical early. Ryan Leach comes back up defensively. He's working with Aaron Miller. Miller. The University of Vermont College days, a lot of college players on this uh, USA team. Back down low, got dumped around by Bisnevsky. And he moved it up the near side wall, couldn't get it out of there. Gunned right back in, Billy Guerin's got it. Guerin drops it off on the point, shot Miller. That goes to the near side boards. Miller was wide open on that right point and wound up and got a lot on it. Miller trying to chase it down to get a whistle. And he does get there. Great to have you with us. Minnesota's the state. Not many people are giving the Russians a chance to win this tournament. In fact, Coach uh, Ron Wilson, the U.S., told me before the game 
he thinks Russia might be the most dangerous team out here because of their individual talent. And uh, Alexei Kovalev told me they're going to play the Russian style, which means puck control, making plays, skating, and controlling the game. And Ron Wilson said, for us to be effective, we better hit and we better play in their zone. Hasn't happened yet, guys. They are finding that out early, Joe. Thanks very much. Cleared around the boards off the far side. Team USA trying to hold it in, get some offense going here. Uh, they uh, have not had the puck in the zone a lot. Billy Guerin down low, trying to cycle it, looking. That one moved all the way out the center. Look at the transition game. This is where they are flying. Into the corner, Fenneganoff. He tries to squeeze through on two. Prolov. Prolov leaves it. Fenneganoff dumps it back in behind the net and gets dumped down and a penalty coming. It's going to be on Team USA, Aaron Miller. Waiting on the call, extra skater, and there it is. It's a tripping call. Yep, Buffalo native on a Buffalo player. Aaron Miller, the native of Buffalo, just tripped up Effin again off who plays for the Buffalo Sabres. And this puts the dangerous Russian power play out onto the ice. Well, this is, this is what scared me in the beginning of the game. Knowing how fast and how agile that the Russian players are, with the big, some of the big guys that they have back on, on defense, I know there's going to be a lot of hooking and a lot of holding, and because of that, there are going to be a lot of penalties by the U.S. I really still think that, that one of Ru Russia's big strength is the talent and the skill of their forwards. It can also be a weakness because often they don't play as hard defensively as offensively, but you've got to play in their end to exploit it. This is a power play now. They've got Gonchar back in the umbrella power play. He's in the middle of pass to him. Got deflected, short-handed opportunity. They move it up off the near side. Backhands it into the middle, and it just got deflected wide. Good opportunity right there to try and set up a short-handed chance. That one, Gundon goes wide, and they'll get a whistle on it as Eric Weinrich wound up and took the chance. Want to remind you, tomorrow, the Toyota World Cup of Hockey continues on ESPN and ESPN2 at 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. ESPN has Yarmir Jager in the Czech Republic against Germany at 7. ESPN2, this USA team, takes on Peter Bondra, Slovakia. That's all coming up tomorrow. Power play. Keep in mind, this is Russia's first game. They uh, get into it here in North America, the four teams' last one to play, and now they got to clear the zone. Alex Kovalev, 12 years in the National Hockey League, number 27. He'll be out there on the power play, moving with Samsonov up the near side. And for most of those 12 years, very familiar with playing a position on the point where he is on the Russian power play. That is where he is working. Team USA, good job to hold it up for a while, then got dumped in by Afenosenkov. Far side wall, looking into the corner to Samsonov. Samsonov, who can fly in the ice and can score, top that one up. The By the way, we were all looking forward to seeing Alexander Ovechkin, the number one pick overall in the draft from this past June play. Well, you think getting information from a North American hockey team is during the Stanley Cup playoffs. You should try getting info from a Russian team during the World Cup. We can tell you he's not playing. That's what we, that's what we can tell you. We can't <laughs> tell you why. We can't tell you when the decision was made. That's all we know. But, uh, that is really a disappointment, not, getting able, not being able to see him. Roll off and move it up. Roll off got hit. He wasn't, ready, he wasn't ready for the American power yet. <laughs> Hadn't turned around on that one. That one dumped back in behind the net. They're looking out in front. Oh. Jam shot got missed. Came back all the way to the boards. Set up. Shot. Esh save. Rebound again. Kicked into that high slot area. And there it is cleared. Power play time at 15 seconds for Russia. Really against the Russian power play, you, you don't have to, you always have to be concerned about rebounds, but, but they don't score as many blue collar goals as most of the teams you'll see in this tournament. They'll score them with finesse, not driving for rebounds. Open again, shot just wide of the net. Boy, that was a gun by Alexei Yashin. Penalty is over. They had one shot on the power play. Do not convert. Dumped into the middle. Scott Miller blocked. Sliding around for his Golov down low. Had it covered. He uh, gave up nothing along the ice. See, that's a problem that U.S. has had in the, lap in the first two games. You get into a situation like that, you have to put that puck in the net. Make extra passes, make cute passes. It's not going to work. The first guy with the puck over the blue line, get the shot on the net. Other two guys get to net, get the rebounds. Here we go. This shot has got to get on the net by Conway. He makes a good pass, but there's nothing to go, nothing to go at. The defenseman makes a great play. Put that puck on net. You have two on one at the front of the net with the two rebound guys. And that's something that Team USA wanted to do is play a, a game that's more straight ahead here tonight. They uh, haven't done it yet. Yeah, well, it looks like Team USA is going to get a shot at a power play right here, right off the faceoff, a holding call coming. Paul Dvorsky, Brad Watson are our officials. Brian Murphy, Tim Nowak working the lines. Well, this was just a holding. It was a great call. U.S. guy's going to get the puck, but 
like the York, like all the NHL guys do nowadays. Hold, hold, hold. I hate it. Good call by the referee. A power play after Russia had their opportunity. Leach dumps it far side for the shot. That got deflected up in the air. Watch Keith Kachuk in front of the net. Watch the pounding this guy takes. He gets his body in front of the net. He is so hard to move where he gets most of his goals. But there's no one that's going to move him out of front of the net. And you watch him getting there. He might score a goal in a tipping right now. Number seven. That's Kachuk. He's working uh, right there. There he brings it back out into the middle shot. That one went wide again and all the way back out the center. Oh, hold on. I forgot to mention Brett Hull with his one-timer from the slot. Didn't get that one on that. Don't see that happen very often that he misses the net. All he will use it when he's open like that. Find a way to get it there. Vizgalov moves out. That's Madano moving up. Madano. Hull was waiting behind the net. Leach has got to come get it. It'll be held on to by Leach. Power play time in a minute 15. I don't see any big jump in Team USA here in this first period. They have a, just a bad habit of trying to feel out the other team in the first period. They want to see, like I said earlier, how the Russians are going to react here in Minnesota in front of their own fans. But isn't this where, where part of the philosophy that they wanted to adopt tonight would come in handy, and that is playing a straight-ahead game? Like you mentioned, get the shots on goal, get the pucks in, establish an energy game before you try to out-finesse the Russians. Exactly. It's, but it's so easy from up here. Get down there and throw some bodies and get the puck to the net. Let's go. Well, get down there then. Up okay. giant two. The shots are 6-2 in favor of Russia in the first period against Canada. Team USA was outshot 19-6. So not nearly as bad, but territorially not good. Rizgalov had that one jump over his stick that time. Played in the corner by Vizhnesky. Trying to move it out of there. Could not. Still time. 42 left on this power play. Team USA has the advantage. Michael Lyles, how Michael Lyles is working the power play off the near side. Youngster getting a lot of chances out there in front. Oh, oh, Billy no, Garen, Billy where Garen. did that go? Billy Garen had the entire net. And the puck somehow went all the way through it. He never got a shot off on it. Wade works it into the corner. Garen getting set up on the dot. Back out onto the point. Garen comes to the top of the circle. Rabowski shot deflected in on net. Rizgalov's there. Puck still loose. He can't find it. That one gets blocked out in deep. Kevinorski put the body down and blocked it. Vizdevsky kicks it away to the near side. And that's going to do it. One final clear and the power play is over. They did not get a shot. They did get a chance or two. Now we're back to five on five hockey. Here's Blake moving up the near side. Blake getting a big hand. He is from Moorhead, Minnesota, and it's his 31st birthday. And he's in the lineup that he wasn't in the other night. So Blake, number 55, he came out on the ice, and that was the roar from the fans. It's all coming together for Blake. All coming together for Blake. Back into the middle. Kovalev going to the net, looking for a return pass. Shot just missed wide. Samsonov skated around everybody. They are moving. Olchenkov came back, dropped it away. A couple of players on this Russian team who are not playing in the National Hockey League, but who play on one of the three leagues in Russia. Moto trying to catch up with that ahead of him. Olchenko clears it around. The champ team USA. Hall of shot. That one got deflected up to the near side. Boy, that one in there like a bullet. Kovalev. Cleared it up and out. Nobody there to get it, though, for Russia. Russia moving back. Samsonov putting the pressure on its center ice. Mike Madonna moving in. Madonna. Shot that one wide of the net. Hull's over there on the far side. Could I get to it? Down to 7.30 left to go in this first period. No score. Team USA and Russia. First three games. You're vying for positioning for the games that will count. The single elimination. The games, the three games that will follow. If you're lucky enough to get that far. Look out. Watch this kid room. move. A lot of room down the middle into the corner. Again, Kovalchuk has been all over the ice. 41 goals, tied for first in the National Hockey League last year. That's him right there, number 71. Kovalchuk got four or five people collapsing in front of the net. Point chance taken wide. That one went off Gonchar's stick, but wide on his shot. Gonchar waiting at a point. The Russian D, they've been open at the blue line. Chelios clears it wide. Boy, Chris Chelios just had to put in a half a day's work to try to contain Kovalchuk. And a whistle and a penalty, a high sticking call coming up behind the play. We'll get the call when we come back. It's scoreless. Bill Daly, National Hockey League at the bargaining table is going to join us during our first intermission. We'll talk to him about the last three days of negotiations for a new deal. Second intermission, Ted Saskin, the senior director of the Players Association, will be joining us. We'll see if we can get answers on what's going on and where they are. They're both here. And 
We'll have a chance to chat. Nice sticking call. Howell, 13 13, second power play of the game for Russia. Okay, we got to watch on this power play. We got to watch Ilya Kovic. This kid loves to shoot the puck. He will shoot it from everywhere, and he's going to get on the left side and hit those one timers. They're going to look to defeat him every time they can. Look at the move put on to get that puck down low. Kozlov is uh, out on the power play, jammed away by Kovalchuk, 71. He gets to the front of the net. Look how open along the blue line here. That's where they've been winding up and shooting. Shot. Yeah. Long way in for Kovalev. Back up on top to Gonchar. Gonchar on the umbrella. Down low again. In front. Team USA collapsing very deep. Gonchar save May right into the midsection of Ash. At that time, there was a screen. Big number 25 for the Russian team, Viktor Kozlov, had parked right with his skates on the edge of the paint and was not about to move. 104 left to go on this power play with 547 left to go in the period. They do not change up on the unit. Frolov goes to the front, left behind him. As Frolov jammed away in the corner. USA will take that, run some time off that clock. They change up on the blue line now. Gonchar left. That shot wide. Kovalev, the opportunity. Kovalev, he's been open. He's on that near side. That one, Ash will hang on to into the midsection. Avidov. Still 38 left on the power play. I think U.S. is doing a great job killing a penalty, taking away the one-time shot from Ilya Kovacic. So give it the long shot, but as she's got that good. I want to remind you, Saturday college football season rolling. Two great names, ESPN, 6 o'clock, defending co-champion LSU Tigers, Oregon State Beavers, 9-15, Tyrone Willingham and Notre Dame take on BYU. Both games, ESPN HD available. There's Ilya Kovalchuk. Only three players in the history of the game scored more goals than Ilya Kovalchuk by the time they turned 21. Mm. Three of them. We'll tell you who they are as we go along. Naturally, one of them's Wayne Gretzky. I was surprised. Was I was surprised by one of them. Oh, not that one. No, Dale Howard Chuck is the other one, but the third one is Jimmy Carson. Yeah. Well, you remember when he came into the league? I mean, Carson was That's just a nice uh, U.S. boy. Gun, huh? He scored 50 in uh, in L.A. He and, he and Bernie Nichols were on fire one year, and Luke rolled the tie. Yep. Five minutes left to go in the period. 13 left on this power play. Yashin takes the chance. Gloved and a good one. Alexei Yashin, five-time 30-goal scorer. Ash the save. One of the big bonuses for Team USA, not only with Mike Madonna being able to play, but getting Brian Rafalski back into the lineup. The key man just finished his shift heading off. But there's not much size on the blue line when you've got Brian Rafalski and John Michael Lyles, but Brian Rafalski is so quick and passes the puck so well. The size never seems to be an issue with him. He just beats people to the puck. Don Shire again and again. Ash able to hang on as Zubris was trying to set the screen down low. Three seconds left on the power play for Russia. Boy, he's being tested again. Robert Ash, 26 years old. Fifth in goals against in the NHL last year, 2.04. And he has been spectacular. The first four periods he's played here. Gonchar winds up, doesn't take it. But again, a shot save made again by Esch. Penalty is over. Five shots on that power play. Deflected in front. They couldn't turn it. Leach was there to knock it away. Vanaganov was down low, waiting right in front of the net. We're back to five on five hockey now. The shots are 11 to two now in favor of Russia. On a wall check heading to the net. Mike Madonna dropped it. Miller shot. That one got blocked. Used the body. That hurt Kasparaitis. Gets right back up. Kasparaitis went down on the ice and blocked that Aaron Miller blast. That's vintage. There is Kasparaitis. He's not a tougher Russian that's ever played this game. What a save made on Madonna's chance on the high slot. Chris Gala flashing the right pad. And a tremendous save. That's the best save he's had here in the first period. 3.59 left to go in the period. Team USA trying to put some heat on now. As Kachuk came out, put a shot on in the middle. of Fennegan's open, didn't take it. Backhander saved by Ash. Rebound controlled into the middle again. Wide open shot. Ash got it, didn't know what it. Save. What a save on Kozlov. Kozlov came through the middle. Ash had it underneath his arm and didn't realize it. And Russia, five on five, continues to put the heat on. Intercepting Chris Chelios. Chelios brings it in, shuts it down. Shot that one in wide, hit the defenseman's stick. Turned up the far side over Kachuk's head, and Kozlov couldn't knock it down. I'll tell you one thing that Rush is doing that I'm really surprised at. I mean, they're playing a complete game, and that includes backside pressure. 
Saw Chris Chelios get the blue line there. He had no time to make a play because he was getting trapped from behind. Sometimes the Russians will come with a big back-checking game, and sometimes they'll look like they're more interested in going the other way. They got a complete game going in the first period here. Boy, do they ever. Kozlov, I can't believe how much room they are finding straight down the middle in the slot. And they're just flowing, cycling it down low here in this first period. Yashin. Using the size, down low again, shot. That was the D coming up from the blue line. And deflected up and over the net, Tavidorsky had the chance. Again, though, controlled down low. Yashin's using his body here with Chelios trying to take it away from him. Gets deflected away. Chelios has had a long shift. Tied up again behind the net. Yashin, Chelios will take a whistle here if he can get it. Move back up to Billy Garen. Garen left it in, uh, tried anyway. Ralston couldn't get it. Down to 225 left to go here in a scoreless first period. Team USA being outshot by Russia 14 to 3. 218 left to go in the period. Not many chances. Again, backhanded in and held on to as Amadi. Took a second whack at it. Couldn't get to it. Some great saves at each end. When we come back, we'll take a look. Moments ago, Brees Galoff, the Russian goalie, his best save of this game so far. What a great one-timer by Mike Madano. This is what he brings to this team. The talent that he has is able to hit this shot like that. And then a great save by Eshi. I'll tell you one thing, Kozlov is not going to miss that shot too often. Eshi made a great shoulder save. There you see the numbers. And uh, now what he's had to do here early in a game to keep it going. Second game in a row, rushing again. Kovalchuk, Kovalchuk lost it. Weinrich is right there with it. Uh, Kasparite is trying to put a shot on and missed it. Like center, he oh, shot. That one just goes wide of the net. Great setup right there. That's one of the best charges Team USA's had. Another opportunity, but bounced all over the place and never ended up on net. Gary, that all started with a big hit by Darius Kasparaitis, and that's a big ooh and awe kind of hit. But you saw the chances that Team USA generated because Kasparaitis got caught in the neutral. Mike Madonna was out there on the far side. Tony Amati Blake on the near side got spun around and lost control of that. A minute 34 to go here in the period. They're flying up ice. Kovalenko, he's a three-time 20-goal scorer. Dumps it back to the near side. Leach is here. Leach sends it in behind the net after he got upset by Kovalchuk, who got his stick in there. And Team USA trying to get up ice. Leach had to come back to find it again. 1-2-2 two, two set up defensively here, forcing that play of Team USA. Trying to get Moto off that near side wall. Howell was in the middle. Kovalchuk back out there now with this uh, regular Madonna line. And uh, they lose control of it. Well, take off on the far side, took the hit by Freda. Minute to go in the period. If again off in, then again off shot, saved by Ash. Rebound turned on him, and he makes another save. Oh, man. Oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, here he is again. Robert Esch is on his game. Another quality chance by the Russians in the front of the net, and Eshi is down on the ground, sprawling, making saves, kick saves everywhere. But the unfortunate thing for Team USA is that he's having to be the center of attraction again. Well, we said it in the beginning of the game. We said in the beginning of game one, if, if Robert Esch is not on his game, this team could be in trouble, but he is, so look out. Javarov, who plays with Vancouver, whacked at that rebound and put a really good chance on that Esch had a knock away. 47 seconds left to go. Don't forget, we are going to be talking to Bill Daly from the National Hockey League, who was at the bargaining table, has been for the last three days and is the uh, leading force there for the league about what's going on regarding the negotiations. There you see the scoring chances, 9-4. Russia's advantage there. The shots, their advantage, 16-4. But there's nothing up on the board. Good work by Kozlov, physically down low to move it away. Wisniewski starts up. Wisniewski waiting, Team USA changing, and Russia wants to change as well. Chelios back behind his own net. Coming on to the 10-second mark here of this first period. Team USA would love to rush one in right now. Blown through center, but couldn't go anywhere with it. Darren's got to move it back, and they did not clear the zone. I want to remind you, coming up, David Amber and Barry Melrose standing by with our intermission report. We will be talking with Bill live here in our highlights. Finland and Germany, they played this afternoon. That's all coming up during our first intermission. Big Billy Guerin was the lone scorer two nights ago in the loss against Canada. The Team USA suffered, and he may have to be a factor here tonight against Russia. I'm surprised at this first period. I'm just surprised. I thought Team USA would come out with a little more fire, and we really didn't know what we were going to see from Russia. What we've seen is a team that's ready to go. No score after one.
Welcome to the Toyota Intermission Report. Barry Melrose and David Amber. Robert Ash saving the U.S. He did. Once again, scoreless game through 20 minutes. We'll get a comment from Coach in just a minute. But first, as promised, Gary Thorne standing by with Bill Daly, the NFL, uh, NHL Chief Legal Officer and Executive VP. David, thanks very much. And uh, Bill is the Chief Legal Officer. Bill, thanks very much first for joining us. And let's get right to it. Three days of meetings, 20 hours. Do you feel any progress was made? Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we made any progress toward a solution, Gary, but, uh, you know, we're committed to continuing to work at the process. We want to get this done. What is the league willing to give that maybe moves this thing off square one? Well, you know, we made uh, we made six proposals in uh, July. All of them were, were attempts to be creative. Uh, we need cost certainty in this league. We need to address the, the multi hundreds of millions of dollars we lost, um, but we, we were very creative and we want uh, to give 50% of our revenues to our players or, or more and maintain an average player salary of $1.3 million. I mean, this, this sport is a great sport, and we want to we wanna be partners with the players. You said you thought maybe there was a charade was the term that you used after day two of the bargaining that was going on by the players. Do you still feel that after three days? Well, uh, we were concerned because we, went, uh, we spent six sessions and, and probably 40 hours of bargaining going over uh, club operations, and, and we didn't see the link to the bargaining process, but we, uh, the union made assurances to us yesterday uh, that uh, we're doing this for a purpose, and, and I would hope that they come forward with a proposal really soon because we need to work hard to get this done. Percentage that this season number one starts on time? I, I'm, I don't want to handicap. I, I continue to hope that we can work really hard over the next two weeks and, and make some progress and move toward a resolution, and I want to get this done as soon as possible. I don't want to lose any hockey. Are the, you, the league directing the teams or the teams on their own going forward as though there will be a training camp? Yes, they are. Uh, a number of our clubs are, are still having rookie camps that open on September 9th, um, and they're operating basically business as usual, but everybody's watching. I mean, everybody wants this resolved. If you go bargain, you do not get the deal done and the league is shuts down and you go to impasse, would the league consider using replacement players at some point to save a part of this season? It's not something we've given any thought to. I mean, we're 100 percent committed to continuing to try to work uh, on this with the Players Association and try to reach a mutual ground where it satisfies everybody. So we're committed to reaching an agreement. We're not focused on anything else. Well, sometimes uh, it's it's the terminologies of that get involved here and bog things down and salary cap seems to be a term that you'd, you'd like to just put on the moon somewhere maybe and forget about it. Is there a way to get the cost certainty thing done from a leads perspective and not call it a salary cap? I, I think there is, Gary, and I, again, we, we made the, the six proposals we made, only one really uh, uh, involved a, a, a team salary cap. All others were ways we thought we could achieve cost certainty. Uh, without having a salary cap kind of concept. Uh, the Players Association defines salary cap a little bit differently than we do, uh, but even uh, of the six proposals we made, we, we didn't even have a linkage between player costs and revenues in one of them. So, again, we're trying to be as creative and work as hard as we can to, to, to reach a deal. Would the league be willing to do something in, along the lines of the revenue sharing we see in some other sports among teams with uh, with a percentage coming if you go over X amount of dollars on a per team basis that you have to share revenues with the teams not doing well again revenue sharing uh, or enhanced revenue sharing is something we've been very consistent with the union from day one that we're prepared to to do as part of a system that works and you know revenue sharing in the absence of a system that works uh, isn't going to solve our problems but re enhanced revenue sharing in a system that works uh, is something we're prepared to do what's next well uh, we, we don't have a, a date set, but I think it's uh, both parties' intentions uh, to get together again next week. We'll obviously spend time together over the weekend on the World Cup, and, and hopefully we'll have a formal bargaining session again next week. We made the union aware that we're available every day uh, to, to bargain with them, and, and they're going to get back to us on a date. Now somebody said, why don't you just lock yourselves in a room and do not come out until you have the deal done? Why don't you just do that? In fact, you could use our studio. Something we're prepared to do. Something we're prepared to do. Uh, but... We need the union to be prepared to do it, too. All right, Bill, thanks very much uh, for coming. I know it's been a long three days for you, and uh, thanks for traveling down here and doing this. My pleasure, Gary. Bill Daly, who's the chief legal counsel for the National Hockey League, and during our second intermission, we will have the representative here who's at the table from the players. Back to Dave and Barry.
All right, thank you, Gary. Uh, some interesting stuff there. Very a couple of things that piqued my interest. Uh, Bill Daly saying he wants the NHL to get down to a $1.3 million average salary. It's right now 1.83. Is that doable? Yeah, it's doable. It's got to be doable. And, and they want 50% of revenues going to players. Right now, it's much, much higher. The players in the NHL get much more of the revenue than any other sport. But I think until the players make a proposal of their own, their players have not made a proposal yet, I think they've got to come to the group and say, this is what we want. Then it gives a starting point for the owners. They've given six proposals. Maybe they were bad. Who knows? But at least they gave six proposals. Now let the players come to the bargaining table and give a proposal. Do you gain any optimism based on what you just heard from Bill Daly? Or are you feeling more pessimistic now that you've heard what the NHL has to say? I, I, I was very optimistic because I thought it had to be done. I thought these are smart men and they would get it done uh, by the 15th. And I still think there's a good chance because we have to. But everything you talk to agents, you talk to players. I was on both sides. I was a player at one time and I was a coach in 94 on the owner's side of it. So I've seen both sides of it. Uh, but it, it's, not very, it's not very likely right now that the season will start in the 15th unless we have a major, major uh, uh, changing of both hearts come uh, September 15th. We need nothing short of a miracle. And speaking of miracles... Miracle on uh, ice. Yeah. It always happens on ice, We need man. a miracle off the ice. But we hope to see maybe a miracle on ice later in this game because the United States and Russia still knotted up 0-0. More from the Toyota World Cup of Hockey Intermission Report next. Game one of our day four doubleheader was Finland and Germany in Germany and Finland getting out on top early. Well, great shot there. That was a power play goal. Germans had their chance. They had a five on three for two minutes. They had a couple great chances in that five on three, but Kiprasov was excellent. And one of the names for Finland that's got to score if this team is going to win is Timo Solani, and that is what Timo does. Nobody shoots a puck from that area better. It was a power play goal, one-timer. Kolzig had played well up to that point, but that was a huge goal. Watch Letton come in here. What a backhand. Plays for the Dallas Stars. Won a Selkie Trophy. Best defensive forward in the NHL. But still can score goals when he gets a chance. Finland wins this game 3-0. Nika Kiprasov, two shutouts now. Finland's now a perfect 2-0. And another good omen for them, Barry. They've had seven different players score so far in this tournament. That's how it stacks up. 3-0 Germany uh, losing this one to the Finns. 2-0 Finland, 2-0 Sweden. And Saturday, the Finns play the Swedes, so that is for who the right to play Germany, probably, because you got to think the Czechs will be Germany. Canada's playing very, very well right now. They're watching this game. they got to be impressed with the Russians, the way they played in that first period. Obviously, Slovakia is a weak sister in that division, so it probably will be Canada against Slovakia in the first round of the medal round. So hockey's well underway, and college football is now underway as well. And of course, this is the place to be tonight, 9.30 Eastern, Northwestern. The Wildcats taking on the Horned Frogs of TCU right here on ESPN2, immediately following the USA-Russia game. Should be a great one. Keep it locked right here. Robert Esch, a busy man. Can Team USA get their act together? We'll find out. The puck drops, period two, next. ESPN2's presentation of the Toyota World Cup of Hockey is brought to you by the Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. Russia's been flying. Team USA has had to hang on. Another first period as against Canada, where they were severely outshot. Welcome back, everybody. With Bill Clement, Jeremy Roenick, I'm Gary Thorne. Second period coming. Well, we talked about establishing a hitting game. You did. Talked about Billy Guerin and Keith Kachuk, but my feeling is that it helps to, to get that kind of game going if you're in the offensive zone. Offensive zone? Go anywhere. Offensive zone, defensive zone, neutral zone, hit somebody. These guys are flying around and they're just watching. We got to get some physical presence in there. USA got to get in there. It's got to start with Keith Kachuk and Billy Garrett. Just like that. Don't start. I'm telling you right now. I'm going to start pushing back, okay? Okay, good. You do that. I'll take care of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Let the NHLers do that part of the stuff. All right, 16-4. Uh, Russia with the advantage in shots in that first period. Last two games, 35-10. to 10. That, of course, the Canadian game. Team Canada against Team USA. Those were first period shots. 35-10. The Team USA has been outshot. What do you think Ron Wilson said in between periods? Things we can't say. <laughs> do you think? I think there was a lot of four-letter words going on down there. He's not a happy man over there right now. Darn! He is the man who coached the 96 team to an upset over Canada in the World Cup Championship, the last one to be played. 
Canada's playing lights out right now as they've already gone 2 0 in the tournament. Team USA taking on Russia. Russia playing for the first time. Kachuk in the intercept shot. Oh, save great rebound. Shot. Into the middle. And a penalty coming in. A power play for Team USA. That's exactly how USA has to start. Keith Kachuk on the offense, pressures the defeat, defense, turns the puck over, and then gets a shot in the net. Rebound, penalty call, power play. And he didn't try to fine tune it once he got to the sharp angle. He knew that if he got a shot on Breeze Galoff, he might at least be able to get a rebound. And that's what he generated here. Exactly. Well, this is what I said he can't make cue plays Keith Kachuk is a grinder gets it to the net now we got a guy coming to the net for a rebound and they can't keep up when they have to take a penalty team that has scored first has won all six games so far in World Cup play it is nothing nothing here team USA gets the power play their second as Kovalev out for tripping at the 14 second mark so a fresh sheet of ice to work this power play on on a full two minutes worth Doug Wade on the half boards left it shot oh, Garen save Rebound. Kachuk knocked it down. Kachuk. It went wide. Two good chances. Kachuk got that one out of the air. Here's Wade again. Wade brings it all the way down to the hash marks. They'll use the umbrella here. Two in the slot for Team USA. Wade's got the puck. Little room down low. Kachuk trying to center. It was blocked. Watch out for the speed here. Short-handed as it's moved out of the zone. Zubras got it up ice. Team USA will regroup. A minute 20 left to go on the power play. First power play, they did not get a shot on, even though they had a couple of fairly decent chances. Wait, Garen, into the corner was Volchenkov, couldn't move it out of there. Sent to the near side just to get it down deep. Intercepted again. Natsky along the near side wall, knocked away from Kavasha. Centered, uh, not out. Rafalski stepped up, intercepted, turned along the wall. Rafalski trying to hold it in. He couldn't find the puck, held in by Leach. No. Boy, that's a pretty concerted effort by Yashin. Alexei Yashin in the corner. He was on his knees, still got up and made the play. I'll tell you, the Russian team is as hungry as any team I've seen in the World Cup so far. I agree. They're ready to go. Back into the middle. Opening shot. Well, save well, again. Take save. Toe. Wow, Brzezgalov having an opportunity in net to make the saves now for Russia. Madano trying to tip it ahead, and it died. Hope came back to pick it up. 27 seconds left to go. Team USA that close to getting one on this power play. Hull let it go by him, actually couldn't knock it down, and it's cleared by Kasparaitis. Well, you can see why Anaheim's high on this goaltender. That was a great save, especially against a guy they called one time off that post. He's not going to miss that too often. He really slides back and forth. In a hurry, Madonna shot. Oh, what a save. Oh, I like to see U.S. coming out with some jump, especially in the power play. This kid, I, I haven't heard of this kid before, but I'll tell you what, he's made some great saves to keep this this game 0-0. This is the one on Mike Madonna just a second ago. Bruce Galoff for, for Team Russia was an absolute unknown for most people internationally that follow the National Hockey League and follow the big-name players. For the scouts that watch the American Hockey League over here in North America, Ilya Brzezgalov is no secret at all. He's a good player. People in Cincinnati know him, or hockey fans. Brzezgalov playing there in Cincinnati in the Mighty Ducks organization. And he has been outstanding. He's only 24 years old. He had a 2.32 goals against this past season in Cincinnati. Four shots on that power play for Team USA, but it's over. They do not convert. They're going to wave off. And the icing, Brzezgalov came back out to play it. Well, Chekhov lost it into the corner. He's got to come back to get it. Good work down there by Craig Conroy in the intercept shot. Miller, save made off the glove. Centering pass out in front. Blake was there. Couldn't get it to him. Two back, three on two. Blake gets back to help cover. Three on three. That one, uh, I heard a whistle, was not. Again, back in behind the net. Datsu, Avaldatsu, who can fly. Tried to chase that down and could not get to it. Conroy, the long up ice, two lines. Tony Amati. Robert Esch, the key factor for Team USA in the first period. Without him, they could have dug a hole for themselves. He faced long range shots, close range shots, wide open shots on the slot. As in period number one against Team Canada two nights ago, it didn't matter. Robert Esch was still terrific. We're seeing a replay of the Canadian game now. USA has already had five shots here in the second period. Mm -hmm. They had four total in the first. It's the same thing that happened to them. The one difference is they're not behind on the scoreboard That's as they were. the big difference right there. Look out. Intercepted shot deflected to the near side. And they hit put on by Samsonov. Playing with the Boston Bruins, of course. This is five-on-five five hockey now. Monty spins around. Bounced off the post on the outside. And Ricochet.
shade off. Players lined up in front. Team USA getting some players in front of the screens. And they're just trying to dump it down low. Centering pass blocked again. Chelios was the man who dumped it down low. He had three teammates in there. But they could not convert on it. He'll go back to his own blue line. It's Team USA. Will come over the boards, and that's going to be whistled on a two-line. Did they change uniforms in between periods? These well, are two totally different teams from the first period. USA has come out and really, really taken the control of the game, and Russia is sitting back on their heels like, what's going on around here? Ladies and gentlemen, in the first period, wearing blue, Dr. Jekyll. In the second period, wearing blue, Mr. <laughs> Hyde. Amazing uh, how it's gone two games in a row. Oh, like my this. goodness. And moved back up by Rafalski. He got a deep into the corner. Team USA is trying to get people in that low slot area, that high percentage scoring position to get get open, and they're, they're doing that. Backhand chance. Riskalov was down. Garen trying to back it in. It never got there. Good work down low. Billy Garen centered again out in front. You see the Russia collapsing. Tevedorsky couldn't clear the zone. Olchenkov was back there to help. This time it'll be moved out by Zubris. Zubris sending back into the middle. A little room for Asha. Backhander. Oh, nice Ash again. What a save. Ash with a tremendous save and what ended up being a short breakaway there for Kavasha. He was wide open. The New York Islander forward almost. Team USA right back the other way. Garen shot deflected straight up in the air. Garen's finding a little room here at the start of the second period. Moved out by Zubris. He's got Kavasha on the right side. Connor Walchuk will come back to get him. He found a wall check, took it around the net. Hull at center, tip pass, couldn't connect on it. And Team USA looking to make a line change here. Scott Gomez held on to it. That one will be whistled. I want to remind you, ESPN is proud to offer coverage of all 19 games in this Toyota World Cup of Hockey. This holiday weekend, four games will be broadcast live. Free preview weekend, ESPN2Broadband.com, including the Canada-Russia game at 7 Eastern. That's going to be on Saturday night. Hope you'll enjoy it. thought one of the best players for Team USA in Game 1 was the man you're looking at, Steve Puttawalchuk of the Colorado Abs. And he was upgraded to the Mike Madonna line here for Game 2 of the World Cup. Miller going to the boards. Team USA is number 3 out there. Gets pinned up. Got off into the corner, but not out of front again. Off the moving it back in. He's shot, and Ash again. And there was a screen in front of him that time. Ash Reach couldn't get that one. Avanov sent it back in behind the net. Here comes Russia now, working that puck around. This is the line that's gotten it done. It's going to get off on the right side again. Shot Ash with a blocker, redirects it to the corner. Puck ends up coming right back to the dot. Hull will move it up. Red Hull with Leach. There's a couple of veterans. Shot wide. Leach joined the flow of the defenseman for Team USA. Back into the middle. Team USA was trying to get a line change done. Almost got caught, but not quite. Team USA chant going for the fans here in Minnesota. They filled the building for this game. Be another one here tomorrow night. That will also be a sellout, and there'll be more to come. Again, with that line change going on, Casparitis trying to find a hole in the middle, and then looked up, and there was Dotsuk skating in. Chelios back in behind the net. Team USA intercepted by Nope. Dotsuk has went right by him. Bumped off at center. Couldn't move it out, though. Conroy moves in, taking a chance and getting away with it. Prisgalov came out deep. Watch out for this kid. Kovalchuk can fly. Kovalchuk looking into the middle. Centers it there. Shot is. Has to make another save. Boy, Kovalchuk knows where the puck is and where his teammates are. Another great setup. And this one is going to be whistled on the icing call. Second period. We are scoreless. Shots are 20-10 in favor of Russia. Larry Plows, the general manager of Team USA. Larry, uh, two games now. Your team's gotten off to a slow start in the first period, but have gotten better in the second. Any reason for that? Oh, it's hard to figure right now, but Esh has been real good for us in the net, and that's a real positive, and we've picked it up in the second. I thought right off the bat here in the second period, we had some real good chances. Did the result of 96, where you won that, have uh, have any effect on on your, your choosing and, and building this team? Oh, it definitely did. I think you, you're always going to look back and uh, look at the experiences you've had in the past and, and use that and help yourself uh, make decisions. Larry, thanks for your time. Good luck. Thank you. Guys. All right, Joe. And uh, you can tell he's kind of confounded by what he's seen from Team USA in these two games as we are. Right, right now, I kind of sensed a, a bit of relief, too, that the first period is over. Yep. Was, was, that, was, was that his heart that was right in his throat yes. from the first period? Yes, it was. I, I thought I saw something like that. You were that. right on that. <sighs> Doug Wade drops it off for Falski back in behind the net. No score. Russia, Team USA. Russia's first game. Team USA lost to Canada. Montreal the other night, and that's going to be whistled on the offside. Well, 
The only goal scorer for the U.S. so far in this tournament, Bill Guerin. And a lot of people don't know about Bill Guerin. He might be one of the funniest men ever in the locker room. People are drawn to him because of his wit. You know, he does an unbelievable impression of Chris Farley. You know, the, the, the one where, I'm sleeping in the van down by the river. That's Bill Guerin. He keeps everybody loose in the locker room. That was pretty good by you, JR. Yeah, that was bad. Have you heard Bill's version of that yet? I'm sleeping yeah. in the van huh? down by the river. That's JR's version. We got to give Bill some extra time on that one. You do a pretty good one, you know. I'll okay. tell you what, he huh? is one no of the thanks. funniest guys that you will ever <laughs> meet in your whole life. <laughs> Moved back up by Garen, uh, at least tried. Dumped off the near side, uh, Team USA. That goes through Garen skates out the center on the centering pass. So they'll get back on side. Ralston out there with Garen. Moved in the near side by Kozlov. Kozlov with Florida and New Jersey last season in the National Hockey League, wearing number 25. Even though when this game started, nobody knew that. Little hook put on by Gomez. He was not supposed to be wearing 25, according to the official sheet. So, uh, first and scratch, the Penasenkov was credited with a bunch of shots in the first period from the locker room. Save made, pulled back in and held on to. This Galoft is, is very steady, good balance, good movement. Yep, you know, the, the only line, look at this, he's bent over here. Now nah, he's just he's just hiding his, his face. He doesn't want to get hit by a stick in the neck. He might have got that right in the midsection, actually. That was a hard shot. I think he did. But the only line that's intact from game one for Team USA is the line centered by Scott Gomez. Billy Guerin's on one side, and here's what happens when you allow Scott Gomez to get the blue line. As long as somebody is supporting him offensively, Scott Gomez, to me, is the, with Doug Wade, the two most creative playmakers by a mile on Team USA. If Gomez can get the blue line, Billy Guerin and Brian Ralston will be trying to step into holes for drops like that. Everybody looking to find that first one right now with 12 minutes to go, second period. We are scoreless. Great to have you with us here on ESPN2. They'll wave it off. Yeah, he's going to have to be wrapped around. John Michael Lyles got it around. Connor Walchuk had it taken away by Zubris. Zubris back up on top. A little room. Bojankov shot deflected to the near side. Wide open. The blue liners are finding some room at each end for those big shots. But obviously, as long as the goaltender can see them, it will be a stop. And we push Konowalczyk, Madano. Wanted to keep it on side. Konowalczyk takes his man down. Team USA wants the line change. Our Toyota World Cup of Hockey. Russia, Team USA. Energy Center here in St. Paul, Minnesota. Great to have you with us. Along with the Joe Jeremy, Bill Komet, and Gary Thorne. We are in the almost the midway portion of this game. 11-17 to go in the period. 21-11 the shots in favor of Russia, and there's no score. Well, just like in the first game, Mike Medano just went down. Looked like he hurt himself. I hope it's not too bad because he's uh, he's sitting over there getting checked out by the uh, trainer right now. I hope it's not uh, his uh, last injury is bothering him right now. Keep an eye on that. It's a knee, of course. That shot got deflected on the attempt to dunk to Chris Drury, who was standing in front of the net. Flying again. It went again off. Trying to move it in. It went again off. Gets stood up and taken into the wall. Good play by Rafalski. And Rafalski will start off ice. Rafalski can skate as well as put checks like that on. Back to get it is Gonchar. Boston Sergei Gonchar drops it. Oh, wow. What a hit there by Tony Amati after Gonchar made the pass. Tell you about the refs are letting these guys play tonight. I've seen a couple plays there. They could have called penalties, but they're, they're letting them uh, divvy it out themselves. They're letting the boys play. Ash will hang on to that one on a chance from the top, but again, a wide open shot. Amati got that hit behind the play at the red line. You know, there, there's my high school buddy. A lot of people don't know. Me and Tony have been friends for, since we're nine years old. Seven it's, years of high school it's, together. It's huh? funny. We played high school together. We played junior together. We played high school together. He came to Chicago. I played there for five years. He came to Phoenix. He, then he put to Philadelphia. We're following each other everywhere. We're good friends. I love it. They both got redshirted in the eighth. Did you hear that? Eighth grade, eighth grade redshirted. Yep, that's red why yep. they spent seven years in high school together. <laughs> Just kidding. It's okay. We had the crib sheets. You know, we, uh, we, you we, we helped each other out in school. There you go. All I know is you're doing pretty well now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Gonchar, that's the man who had it. Miller stepped up to try and knock it away. It rolls back to center as Aaron Miller's shot got fanned on. Miller and Leach teamed up defensively. Leach's pass is a bad one and intercepted. Again, down the middle shot. Ash is going to have to hang on to that one. Kovalchuk again. Heck of a game, but right now it's about the goaltenders. No score. Mike Madonna for Team USA shaken up moments ago in blue on the left, now in the middle, getting sandwiched. And it looked like he took a hit right on the knee. Watch his knees make contact right there with Volchenkov. 
It's right on his left knee where he blocked the shot, wasn't it, JR, in game one? Yeah, right on the outside of his left knee, and it looks like that, uh, that, that hurt him a little bit. That stung him. Russia's got the puck of the offensive end. Dotsu wheeling and dealing. Tried to pass at the back of the net in front. Shot! Ash! Oh my goodness. I'm not even sure he that? saw that. Kovalenko got that puck as a ricochet to him, and the three time 20 goal scorer, Andre Kovalenko, put it right on, and Ash again denied him, and it'll be an icing. Oh. Well, I think John Michael Lyle's got a little chunk of the shot in front, but Pavel Dotsuk, we've seen in the last two years playing for the Detroit Red Wings, is absolutely magical when he ends up behind the net. Here is Dotsuk. He was hooping people behind the net. Two guys there, and Mike, yep, J.M. Lyle's got just a piece of it. That hit the end of the glove, did it not? Did Both you see those moves the by Dotsuk behind the net? You can't teach that. And I can't do that. About doing My that. goodness. That's a 30 goal scorer. I mean, he dazzles you with the moves that he makes offensively. We've seen at least two fantastic moves, and then others that are just high quality NHL. I guess you have to understand it before you can teach it. And everybody just ends up scratching their heads saying, How does he do that? Madonna is back out on the ice and was offside as he went over to Hull. Again, it's Ash holding us in, JR. Well, there he is. Look at his mask. This guy is a rocker. And there, earlier in the camp, he got a chance to go into Detroit and meet Kid Rock, go to one of his concerts, and actually go to his house in his studio and hang out and watch what he does at his home. He was so excited. He says, you're the next guy going on my helmet. He's a big rocker. So all you music fans out there, love Robert Ash. Off the near side on the dump in by Leach. That's who again will begin to try and free that puck up. Got some help cleared out of the zone. Samsonov was there. Samsonov trying to get the backhand in the middle, couldn't do it. Still has the puck in the corner. Good play by Samsonov to get it to pull up down low. Kozlov rather moving it. Victor Kozlov in the corner with Samsonov. If they go back and forth, Samsonov had it, got hauled down. That's about the only way you're going to stop him. You grab a hole just like that. Stick midsection and go for a ski. Miller trying to kick it out of there, couldn't do it. Samsonov freed it up, but it comes to center. For the big guys like Aaron Miller, Gary, he can do that. For the little guys like Brian Rafalski and J.M. Lyles for Team USA, and Ron Wilson and I talked about this this morning, so they just want them to contain. Make sure they get back to the front of the net before the guy they're trying to take out, but don't try to physical with them. Tony Amati, Team USA, drop pass to nobody. And Amati gets knocked down. Here comes Yashin. Alexei Yashin looking at a three on two. Yashin slowed down at the end of it, though. Didn't have the gas to take it in. Fortunate. Lyles got back and was able to cover it up. Team USA. Again, back into the end of Monty. Again, lost control. Gonchar cleared it around the boards. Came back to a point. Shot deflected wide of the net. And weight turning it. You hear them hollering Dougie. That was Tony Amati who was open in the high slot for a moment, but only a moment. Transition game of this Russian team. Continues to be big time. Zubras. Zubras backhand chance. Score! Off a Team USA member. Just an awful break right now. And you knew the way this game was going with the way the two goaltenders were playing. I just had a feeling that something weird was going to happen. The first goal was going to be a cheap one. Dinah Zubris had a full head of steam. And it was, in fact, Chris Chelios that got back and was just getting back to the paint when Zubris was able to make it around the net and dump it in front. But the key here is that there was no shift by the defenseman to face Zubris. So he was able to get around J.M. Lyles. When he put it out front, it went right off the skate of Chris Chelios. The big Washington cap player, Dinah Zubris. That's gift number one of the World Cup tournament for Dinah Zubris. He has never played in a major international tournament before, and here in his first such game, he gets a goal. He had 12 last season in 54 games playing for Washington. So a 1 0 lead taken by Russia on their 25th shot of the game. They continue to double up on shots, 25 to 11 against Team USA. Gomez helped free it up down low. He's against the uh, near side wall. Tied up. See if that fires up Rush even more. They've been skating well. Shot into the middle, knocked away. Asperite is banging. That one goes all the way through. Billy Garen wanted to redirect, couldn't get a stick on it. Garen reverses to the near side. Garen working to the front. Good hit. Casparitis again. He's played his usual physical game. Garen came over, couldn't tie his man up. Three on two opportunity, maybe. Proloff had moved it out. Big battle going on behind the play. Shot. Esch knocks it away. Kasparitis got tied up behind the play and just getting to the bench now. Third back up intended for Madonna. Nobody touched it. And Wisniewski will come back for the whistle. 
course, Darius Kasparaitis is a guy that most players in the NHL really love, isn't he, JR? This guy is hated by more people in the National Hockey League, I think, than anybody else. One, because he goes out and he tries to hurt you. Two, he's just tough as nails. He doesn't feel any pain, this guy. But I'll tell you what, he is a competitor, and he is a good guy to have on your team. There's the incident that took place behind the play, that pushing and shoving. The goal at 12-20, Zuber's got it. Kavasha got the assist, an even strength goal to give Russia the one thing lead. And Daggy might call a penalty. And fortunately for Madonna, who did not touch up that bad knee again. Pretty nice windmill by Madonna going down. Probably make the uh, Dutch team on that. <laughs> Watch this. Stick was up around his waist. It's a thing of beauty. Not a real happy Kovalenko looking on. There's the tank, the Russian tank. How old is he, 60 now? He's only 34. Young Come man. on, he's been around forever. Young he, hasn't, man. He, he hasn't even been in the NHL for the last I three years. I should say that I'm 34. I apologize. And you should. <laughs> Kovalenko gets the hooking 13 22, third power play in the game now. Center. Oh, oh, score! Oh, 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 my goodness. And Kachuk knocks it home. Wow, wow, wow. Well, Brian Rafalski started it. And there's nobody that can thread the needle with as much steam going tape to tape as Mike Madonna. Look at Rafalski with his head up. Never look down. And watch Mike Madonna. He will not look down at the biscuit either. What a great pass. And Keith Kachuk going to the net like he does so well. But what a pass by Mike Madonna. It's what I talked about in the beginning. He is so talented and he finds these guys. You know what happened there? He had to wait until Keith Kachuk was perfectly positioned so that he could pass between Vishnevsky's skates. He waited, waited, and then went for the opening. And it is a 1-1 game, a power play goal. Kachuk, who's had 30 or more goals, eight of them in the last nine seasons, puts it home on the power play. And Team USA answers that goal they gave up. This one will be covered. Team USA, Team Russia tied at one apiece. There's the man who tied it up and the man who got the assist, Madonna, on the left. Wow, what a pass. Well, this is precision at its best by Mike Madonna, waiting for the opportunity, hoping that Vishnevsky didn't turn his skate sideways, looking right at him. But isn't it amazing to watch that, him thread that puck right through the feet it is while they're, while they're moving. I mean, th this is a, that's unbelievable for a pass like that. And then for a goal, it was awesome. Way to go. In the USA trying to get one back and almost on the deflection in front by Chris Drury, who was cutting through the middle. So play picks up for Team USA, and that's going to be whistled on the offside. The Czechs goal, Madonna and Rafalski at 13.44 to tie it. This Labor Day weekend, ABC Sports kicks off the 39th consecutive year of college football. It will begin Saturday with a regional doubleheader starting at noon. A full weekend college football on ABC, home of the bowl championship series. 18,064 sellout crowd. This building this year has had the great Minnesota Boys State Tournament in it, the WCHA College Tournament, the All-Star Game, the Minnesota Wild regular season, this World Cup of Hockey, and the College Hall of Fame hockey game all played here in Minnesota. I'll tell you, this has been the, the state of hockey. It's living up to its name this year. Well, I think it's, it's great that they have professional hockey back here in Minnesota. It was really depressing when they lost the team to Dallas, but I'll tell you what, they've come back in droves, and they show why they deserve hockey here in Minnesota. Every single pro game that's been played here the last three years has been a sellout, including this one here tonight. And a beautiful building, by the way, isn't it? Sure, it's gorgeous, and a great place here in St. Paul. It's a beautiful locale to have it as well. That'll be cleared back, uh, or attempted cleared into the zone. Bounces off that bench. That'll be whistled. 1-1, 456 to go in the second. It is the leading state as far as supplying the NHL with players. Of the 160 American-born players in the NHL, 28. Most of any state were born in Minnesota. But how many guys on the U.S. team are from Massachusetts? Massachusetts dominates in terms of how many guys are on this USA team. Way to go, Massachusetts. How many? I don't know. More. Oh, <laughs> You thought I was going to let you off the hook. You did. You know what? There's, well, there's seven of them. Here's, here's Chris Drury from Connecticut. I'll tell you the That's college. That's New England. I'm going to count that. 21 of 26 players for Team USA on their roster came through U.S. colleges or universities. Steve Konowalchuk is one of the five that didn't. 
Chris Drury did. As a matter of fact, the, the number one school that put players on this team was BU. And they have four players, including Chris Drury. Pretty spread out. And uh, credit to the college program and what it has produced for professional hockey here in the United States. Intercepted shot, and the wrister just went wide by Prolock. Yeah, how about Chris Drury? You coming off the Little League World Series? He won the Little League World Series as a pitcher when he was a kid. And never hears the end of it. Prolock <laughs> doesn't want to, for that matter. It's uh, still one of his shining moments. Look at Leach put the heat on, or at least try. Leach was trying to gather that puck in and could not get it away. Point chance save. Gonchar redirected again of a Team USA player in front. That time Scott Gomez hit it. How, how does this guy come out of this? He's got two guys on him. These Russians are so strong on their feet. They just find a way to get in here. Two, leachy has got a good good hold on the Finnegan off. He stays up, stays up. Three guys get knocked into each other. He comes out and a great scoring chance with some action in front. But as she gets it. Oh, oh man. Another save in front. Chelios trying to clear it. Could not. Bouncing puck. Kachuk gets it out of there. You will not see Ilya Kovalchuk of the Atlanta Thrashers miss those very often. He had a point blanker. The only thing that helped Robert Edge is the puck was rolling. Team USA gets a chance at the other end. Hull, oh, chance, save. Rebound. Couldn't quite get there. Mike Madonna was just about a half a stick length away from putting Team USA on top. Again, the intercepted center. A lot of those have been turned over. But Team USA right through the top of the crease. Kovalchuk playing a heck of a game. Back into the middle goes by everybody. Visnevsky will have to chase it down. I really don't think there is an A player in the National Hockey League right now that is more exciting to watch than Ilya Kovalchuk. I know being playing against him every time he comes on the ice. We are scared to death. He's the only guy to go coast to coast twice and beat everybody on the ice. That is, he has tremendous stamina to go with that speed. As he will take those extra shifts. Connor Walchuk moved it in. Let's bounce back in behind the net. Again, Team USA looking at that middle. Connor Walchuk came all the way around. Broken stick out there on the ice. The pocket was able to move around it, though. And this is moved back out to the center. Weinrich went back to get it. Moved it through. Team USA wants a change here once they get that puck up ice. Wait, forcing the play deeper into the zone. Team USA will get part of that change done. They clear. Dumped off in the blue line. They did not get out of the zone. 1-1, 243 to go here in the second. And tomorrow, the World Cup of Hockey continues. ESPN, ESPN 2 at 1 o'clock. ESPN, Yager, the Czech Republic against Germany. At 7 Eastern, ESPN 2, U.S. back on the ice. Peter Bondra, Slovakia the opponent. That's all coming up. World Cup of Hockey, manana. There's the player that I think has been the best for the Russian team so far. Maxima Finneganov of the Buffalo Sabres. He outshot Team USA in the first period by himself. He had five. They had four. Impressive, fast, and strong, huh? He has really been moving. Right. Finnegan and then and off. You got it. That's, what, that's how we could pronounce it in national hockey. <laughs> That's the breeze that causes that as he goes by. That's played up and into the seats. Penalty. Did it touch yes, the stick? He's no, calling it a penalty. Not. It is a delay of game call. To, that one went up and over and did not touch anybody. Flipped up on his stick, didn't it? It looked like he was just trying to scoop it, and the puck went flat on the blade of uh, Brzezgalov's stick, and you cannot shoot it into the crowd if you are a goaltender without ending up sending somebody to the sin bin. A great opportunity right now for the U.S. with two minutes and 17 seconds left. It's a great opportunity to go in, get a goal on this power play, and go into the third period up a goal. He wasn't even close. Not he cleared it by close. six feet. Yep. For Olympic puck throwing, that would have been okay. Because Galov <laughs> delay a game, 17-43. Team USA is one for three in the power play so far. Their goal coming minute 24 after Zubras had scored for Russia. And of course the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim management watching the game tonight are saying listen we said he was a good goalie we never said he was a great puck handler. Nope. Yes he is shown to be a good goalie. So Team USA on the power play. They're going to have to try to move, help move that one out. Couldn't do it. Kovalenko tried to clear and could not. Rafalski will be back along the blue line. madano has got it on the half boards. Hall that one got blocked. You think they know their U.S. strategy? Get hauled one timer in that spot? They're trying to find him, aren't they? That was a great play right there to take away that one timer. Everybody has to keep an eye on him. Kovalenko drags that one back towards his own end. Here's Rafalski, used to working the power play. Rafalski is. Moved in by Hall. He's got Kachuk in front of him. Hall dropped it back to the pointer tribe. Rafalski had it banged away. Good job to hold it in. Almost a two on one short handed. But Rafalski's play at the blue line kept control of it. And cleared the length of the ice of Asha. 
Bill's favorite name in all of the National Hockey League history, actually. Uh, 1.22 left to go here in the period. And Gary Bryan Rafalski just went off the ice. Scott Stevens and Scott Niedemeyer get most of the publicity and have over the years in New Jersey. I think he's one of the most underrated players in the entire sport, Brian Rafalski. Yep. It's a heck of a group New Jersey has as they built their team around the fence. They've got the guys to do that with. Down to a minute left to go in the period. 44 seconds left on this USA power play. They're having trouble getting it into the zone. Wisniewski was able to move it away. Ash came out to help. Final minute, second period, game tied at 1 1. And it'll be dumped hard. Billy Garrett. Rebound comes into the middle. The clear out of the zone. Still time. Almost for Proloff. Proloff a shot. Ash one arms it. Proloff picks it up. Still short handed Russian. Proloff knocked down by Wait. Zubra scored. Kavasha 12 20. Russia led 13 44. Kachuk from Madonna and Rafalski on the power play. Tied the game up. Team USA on their fourth power play of the game. Three seconds to go on the power play, 18 in the period. Loved uh, along the near side wall. Zubris, the man who got the goal, number nine for Russia. Zubris tying it up. They got no shots on that last power play. We're back to five on five hockey. Again, taken back in behind the net. And uh, dug out by Kasparitis. Kasparitis takes the right from Garen, and that will do it. Two periods done. Shots 29 14 in favor of Russia, but the game is tied at 1 1. Coming up, intermission. David and Barry will be along. All the latest. The interview with Ted Saskin. We will have Ted live right here in the afternoon World Cup action. So stay tuned. This game goes to the third. 1 1. After a scoreless first period, it ended up being Zubers from Kavasha putting it home. And then Kachuk tied it. Welcome back to the ESPN studios. Barry Melrose and David Amber. 1-1 one, one game through 40 minutes in St. Paul and maybe, maybe would have been 1-0 yes. U.S. if it wasn't for Chris Chelios' size 12 skates. As promised, Gary Thorne is standing by with Ted Saskin, the NHLPA's executive director. Thanks very much, Ted Saskin, joining us, and we sincerely appreciate your doing this because we know it's been a uh, long couple of weeks and past three days. Well, it's been a long uh, couple of years, I guess, Gary. <laughs> Ted, let's start right at the top. What do you want out of this negotiation to make it go? We want to get a fair deal for both sides. The players want to play hockey this year and are very committed to getting a fair deal for both sides. That's what we want. What's bogging this down? Is it this term salary cap that's doing it? Well, it's absolutely. The league's insistence on a salary cap, they've made that the threshold issue. Issue. They know that's something we're not prepared to negotiate. The players have already made it clear. We put together a proposal that represented very significant concessions. It addressed all of the stated concerns of the owner, spending activities of some of the teams. It addressed revenue sharing needs of certain teams, changes to the entry level, and an overall adjustment on salary. It represented hundreds of millions of dollars in concessions. The response to that we got, a one-page salary cap offer, and more recently, six concepts that are six different ways of dividing a salary cap. And that remains the one problem. Now, Bill Daly said to us in the first intermission, the revenue sharing is something they are willing to discuss and negotiate and have done. Is there a way to come up with, let's call it cost certainty, as the commissioner does, something other than salary cap through that kind of a revenue sharing plan that might work? Well, a revenue sharing coupled with a luxury tax has certainly proven to be very effective in baseball, and that's part of the framework we've been talking about with them. We're prepared to take additional drag on salaries in that type of system and raise enough revenues to assist some of the teams that need it because the NHL right now has the least amount of revenue sharing, and we think it's an important component, and the players are willing to have luxury taxes that do have a negative impact on salaries. The only thing the players are not prepared to negotiate is a salary cap, yet Gary Bettman has made that the key issue in these negotiations. Now, let me ask you this. Over the last three days, apparently, a lot of paper looking. You went through a lot of books and records, whatever. Are you satisfied you're getting numbers that you can believe now from the owners as to what the money situation is? Well, the last few days has really been looking more at the business and management practices of the clubs. The numbers, we know where we agree, we know where we disagree. It really comes down to how you define the hockey business. We think you have to define it like the owners define it. They look at their buildings, they look at their cable stations, they look at their team, they look at it 
as an integrated entity. The NHL tries to parse that into different segments, and that's not the way an owner looks at his business. It's not the way we are going to look at the business. Is there any chance of getting this thing done for the season to start on time, in your opinion? Well, certainly, as soon as they get off the cap, we can get a deal done because the players are committed to getting a deal that's fair for both sides, and we'll do everything we can to get that done. After the last three days meetings are you ready to come forward with another proposal to take to the league for the next meeting in Toronto next week. Uh, I don't know the exact timing but there will be another proposal that will come forward from the players. It's going to be responsive to issues we've been identifying in the last few weeks but it's not going to be a framework that includes a salary cap. It'll address all their concerns but if Gary Batman remains determined to get a cap unfortunately he's going to be proceeding with his lockout. If I find another name to use in place of salary cap, might we be able to get, the, get this thing done? <laughs> I wish it were that simple, Gary. I wish it were, but it uh, hasn't been that simple yet. All right. I told Bill we'd offer you the studio here. You can come in and sit down, the two of you. We'll lock the door, and you stay right here. Until you get the deal done, we won't let you out. We will bring coffee and hot dogs. How about it? Well, uh, we're committed to doing everything we can. All they have to do is get off the cap, and we'll uh, we'll get some progress in All these right. in these talks. That's Thanks. Sure. Look, I know it's been a tough week for you. I really appreciate you coming on and doing this. and. Uh, and I really mean good luck. Thanks very much, and thanks for your support of the World Cup. Great right. event. Good to have you here. Thank you very much. Let's go back to Dave and Barry. All right, Gary trying to work as the mediator there, but neither side, neither side really wanting to bite to go in there. What struck you about what Ted Saskin had to say? Well, Ted didn't answer yes or no to the question Gary said about the revenues. And the bottom line is the players do not believe the numbers that the owners are, are saying, uh, the money they make. That's the whole crux of the problem from the Player Association. They feel the owners aren't reporting the revenues properly. And until that happens, uh, we're going to have an impasse. The players don't believe uh, the numbers. The owners say the numbers are right. The owners say they've lost $300 million. The players say that's not true so until uh, we get some trust in this negotiations until uh, these two sides become an, as one and, and negotiate properly uh, it doesn't look like we're gonna have a season well, we really hope this isn't the last hockey we're gonna see in a while sure but if it is it's great hockey that period, one, was. That period was Russia US through 40 minutes in st. Paul Minnesota more from the World Cup of Hockey rolling your way next Earlier today, it was Finland and Germany from Cologne, Germany, and the Finns looking great early on, Barry. Well, the Finns aren't spectacularly talented offensively like the Swedes, but they're very solid both ends of the rink. That's a Swedish-type player, can play offense and defense. The Germans played much better today. They had some chances. They had a five-on-three for two minutes, but Kiprasov was just too strong. Now, watch Solani here, power play for uh, Finland. That is what that guy gives the team. He's not a great defensive player, but when he gets a puck and open ice and he can shoot it like that, it's going into the net. And then Yeri Letton and Dunian in style. Oh, my goodness. That's stronger than a lot of wrist shots. I haven't seen a backhand like that for 20 years, man. Up over the glove. Kolzig just didn't have a chance. And that was your game. Kippersoft back-to-back shutouts. Finland wins 3-0. Finland a perfect 2-0. and And more good news for them. Seven different players have scored so far in this tournament for the Finns. Typical Finnish effort. Everybody contributes offensively. Everybody contributes defensively. The Swedes have been very impressive. The Finns have been very impressive. The Czechs were impressive for one period. Obviously, everyone wants to play Germany in the first round. Canada, Russia looked very good. I've impressed with them for two periods. The United States showed some heart in that second period. The U.S. showed heart, but will the U.S. be rewarded with a win today? That is the question. And we get ready for period three. Russia and the United States tied at one. Almost ready to drop the puck on a third period from St. Paul, Minnesota. Keep it locked right here. ESPN2 third period action coming your way. ESPN2's presentation of the Toyota World Cup of Hockey is brought to you by the Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. And Samuel Adams. When you're ready for a distinctive brew, Samuel Adams. Always a good decision. Welcome back. State of Hockey, Minnesota, and a good one as we go to the third period tied at 1-1. With Jeremy Roenick, Bill Clement, Joe Micheletti, I'm Gary Thorne. Mike Madano, another performance. Knee got hurt a little bit, came back out on the ice. 16-year NHL veteran has won the Stanley Cup and the World Cup in the 96 team, and now he's trying to do it again. And he'll take another power play, obviously, as Team USA would. If, if anything's going to decide this game, it may just be a power play in the third period because as that second period went along, everything seemed to stabilize. But one thing that stood out was the play of Mike Madonna, Jr. Well, at first we got worried about his knee here and whether he was hurt. But then he comes out right on a power play, gets a nice pass. Here he gets tripped up. But then he gets a pass. And look at this, right through the feet as you're moving, right on the tape in the back of the net. That's exactly what Mike Madonna needed to get going in this tournament. He drew the penalty to make the power play happen and then made him pay even more. And we are ready to go. Third period about to get underway. Shots 29-14 in favor of Russia. 
through the first two periods Russia's first game overall the teams that have come from the former Soviet Union and to Russia have beaten the U.S. 28 times lost only four times and tied one a lot of that of course had to do when the great Soviet Red Army team was playing and everything was sponsored and supported by the government that is not the case anymore and Russia is now trying to rebuild their hockey program Ash turned that one away off the near side there was Kozlov again Kozlov has had a couple of chances in this game through the middle deflected never got in tic tacs away to Kachuk and he moves it out of the zone Kachuk did not end up on net put some crazy hops taken away by Kasparitis we are just underway here in the third period great to have you with us our coverage of the World Cup of Hockey that'll run right through the championship game that we played in Toronto that one whistled wide and not too far wide Ryan Ralston wound up and had a pretty good chance right there wow, what a shot he can have that's when you see on the power play they might put him back in a power play on the point just to get oh, oh my god what a save net. Ash played the puck almost got caught out of the net and somehow got back and made a save how did this chance come about? Just a really freaky, freaky bounce into the slot, and a one-timer, and Eshi was right on top of it with a good kick save. Like he was sliding and could have been out of position had he continued to. There he was getting back in goal, and he was sliding to his left. Luckily, he's got that telescopic right leg, <laughs> and he just dragged it by. Look at him. He was sliding right out of the paint. Wow. I'll tell you what, his hip doesn't look like it's bothering him after that June surgery. He looks great. Had a busy summer, hasn't he? The surgery, the wedding, his marriage. Meeting Kid Rock. I think that was probably the best part of his summer, to tell you the truth. Better oh, than the surgery, I'll tell you that. Wait a minute, guys. You, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you ask him, you're going to get the same answer. And his wife might say the same thing. She's a sweetheart. Well, you're going to find out if she will. Yeah. Take him back. I ain't going Kelly, there. you know. You know I love you, Kelly. <laughs> Moved ahead by Wisniewski. As uh, Russia has it back in their own end, they're trying to get a line change, but uh, not quite sure what they want to do with it. So that one's going to be whistled right there as it ended up on the bench. There's an interesting line change going on there. 18 guys were sitting on the boards. Hey, take a look at our Samuel Adams tournament update. Canada leading the North American pool. They've won two. Finland tied Sweden for the European pool lead with their win today over Germany. Teams 5-1 and one when playing in their home countries. Germany lost today playing at home in Cologne. That's the first home team so-called that is lost That's Slovakia and Russia about home teams they don't have much to say about that they're both playing here in North America they don't exactly have a home ice can someone please score on, fin on Finland please can Germany please be given a goal <laughs> I feel bad they got a couple against Sweden <laughs> they're working hard out there brought back by Kovalenko leaves it to Finneganov is in the middle down low shot that one gets deflected up and over Datsuk coming through Great play by Eric Weinrich just to stay, hold his ground. Here we got Pavel Datsu coming on him one on one. And he just holds his ground, holds his ground. Pavel could have easily gone around him, but takes a shot, and Eric makes a great play to deflect that up inside. 16 years in the National Hockey League, talking about your state of Massachusetts. That's the man from my state of Maine right there, who's turned a college uh, hockey experience into a very fine NHL career. Sent back for Chris Chelios. Chelios. Far side board just jammed up and out of the zone. Chris Drury got a stick on it to get it out of there and did. Nobody shot through a screen and wide. That was close. Mike Conroy, boy, is he going in this game. He was a right winger in game one against Canada two nights ago. He's back in his natural position, and it shows. He gets taken down. Pretty good back checking by Kovalenko that time to knock him away. Conroy back at center. Conroy has found some openings in that slot. That'll be whistled on the icing. Third period, three minutes in. Here's Craig Conroy, who was just a key guy for Calgary in their march to the Stanley Cup Finals and center of the line that had Jerome McGinley playing with them. But when the season ended and when unrestricted free agency started on July 1, Calgary did not make him an offer. That hurt his feelings, but he said, I know it's a business. He thought he would be in limbo, but the Los Angeles Kings stepped up to the plate, and now he's a Los Angeles King. Hoping there will be a season to be played. Holy different lifestyle. Calgary to LA. Oh. Shot again. What, what a save. save by Ash again. And again, he is holding them in as Rush is finding a way to come down those boards and get some shots off. And that time, Afeniganov did it again. Maximum Afeniganov right here. He did a really good job when Aaron Miller dove to try to keep the puck away from the dive and the blade. That is his eighth 
shot, Bill. We were talking about that. He leads all shooters, obviously. Eight shots in this game, and again, it will be gloved by Esch. So again off with one chance. Jabbar off with another, and Esch with two saves. This is going to be a tight third period. The shots continue to pile up along with the chances for Russia, but the scores continue to the score continues to be just one apiece. And we do have overtime in this format, NHL format, five minute overtime, skating four on four. Yep. Regular NHL rules apply. Madano dropped it off. And Connor Walchuk will send it in for the red all the way around to the near side. Rose Madonna trying to get open in the middle. Hull dropped it back. Madonna centering. Had Weinrich cutting. Madonna with the block right back to him. Move to the side of the net. Tevodorsky battling to keep him away. Good play by Tevodorsky and Connor Walchuk into the middle. Madonna didn't get all of that off the heel. And it was dropped off by Prezgalov, the goaltender. Weinrich back again looking for Polsky's open. Russia was changing, but it's a two line pass. I want to remind you, Saturday night, Labor Day weekend, college football, presented by Rustolium, Epoxy Shield. It brings you the defending co-champion LSU Tigers against Oregon State, 6 Eastern ESPN. At 6 and ESPN 2, Sylvester Croom becomes the first black coach in SEC history. Mississippi State and Tulane, all coming up this weekend. Hard to believe we are at the end of the summer weekend, even though there may be a lot of summer to go in places. And those of you in Florida, thinking of you, I hope that uh, this latest hurricane Stays out to sea, as unlikely as that may be. Tony Monty brought it back in. Got dropped off looking for Blake in the middle. Pass deflected by Volchenkov into the corner. Taken by Wait. Wait's got Volchenkov in the midsection with his stick that time. Good job to keep it alive. Blake turns it back in behind the net. Waits out in front of Monty. Takes the bump. Controls the pipe. Again, cycling, but it's in the corner. Russia will let him do that all night. Now Monty gets to the front of the net. The D's joining the cycling flow. That's Chelios. Chelios got him away from Samsonov. Chelios stays down low. Now backs up. Blake behind the net. Pinned up. Good work. Kozlov taking away Chelios again. Look out. Team USA is tired. Needs some legs out there. Three on two. They get it back into the middle. Down the middle. The centering pass. Score! Are and a you by Kovalev. Oh kidding gracious. me? Team USA was out of gas, and Kovalev knew it. You know what? I'm going to kick myself in the butt again, because just before I said, we haven't seen Alexei Kovalev at all this game. Have you seen him, Bill? I haven't seen we him. Have now. And I should have said it, because look at this goal. I can't believe it. You can't turn a, you can't turn someone inside out like that, and then even from the goal line, put it on the top shelf. That's not right. Oh, my goodness, what a goal. You people at home have no idea how unbelievable talent that just took to make that goal. Wow. A two to one lead. Kovalev gets it done oh. and the Russian fans up there he is. He played with the Islanders and Montreal this past season had only 14 goals combined. Kovalev put it home and that'll be touched up on the icing call and Russia's back on top by a score of two to one. But the one thing we know about Alexei Kovalev is that he has the brilliance. You just don't know when it's going to show itself. Unfortunately, Tony that was, yeah. has been back on defense trying to cover for Chris Chelios, who had been caught up, and Alexei Kovalev. But when you're coming down as a forward, you take a peek, and if it's a forward that's back there, you're going to try him on. That's what Kovalev did to Tony Amati. That one shot through the middle, deflected, and a great save made. Turn back into the middle. What a play on Chris Drury. Drury thought he had one right there. Vizgalov somehow with that left pad. Vizgalov does not seem to ever go down on the ice. Shot blocked. Another chance Conroy pile up in the net and a penalty on Team USA. I think it may be against Russia, Gary. Okay. Yeah, it's Russia for holding in front of the net. It's holding. I thought we might have had a goaltender interference, but not so. Chris Drury was down and Alexei Yashin was the guy that was holding him down. Yep. The action of the New York Islanders who's wearing the C. He is Russia's captain here for the tournament. We have not mentioned, guys, that this Russian team is having to do this with lots of political problems that resulted in Nikolai Habibulin, Evgeny Dabakov, Sergei Fedorov, Shamnov, and Jitnik not playing. The list of players who, for different reasons, decided not to come. 
is probably as large as the list of guys that decided to, to come. That uh, says something about where this Russian program is, that they can miss those kind of stars and still be playing this well. Well, but at the same time, Gary, how about this? The Russian program, and there's uh, Zinatuli Bidyaletlinov. They didn't even invite Alexander McGillney, Sergei Breland, Slava Kozlov, Andrei Nikolishin, Igor Yulinov, Sergei Zubov. Didn't even invite them. Team USA gets a chance on the power play. This is their fifth power play. Yashin holding at 5.36. Team USA's goal came off a power play and almost got another one. Rafalski charging. Able to hold it in. Mike Madonna, a shot. Save made again. Da Madonna's Rob. Bezgalov again. Standing up, not going down, not giving you anything to shoot at. Moved back in by Kovalenko. He gets taken down along the near side boards. Rafalski trying to dig it out. The fine play by Kovalenko to keep that puck moving. And Madonna will bring it in, leads ahead of him. Madonna kept it on side somehow. Kachuk behind the net. Kachuk, Paul Madonna. Lewandowski got the puck. Falling down, Hull on the near side, so there was nobody there to hold that puck in. Short-handed Russia. Another minute, four seconds on the power play. Russia changing. Gets fanned on the far side, but controlled by Tabarov. Back to him in the corner. Madonna poke checks it away off the wall. Team USA will give it to Leach and start up ice. 50 left on the power play. Russia leads it. Last score, 2 to 1. Team USA does not want to go down 0 2 here in this tournament, even though the first three games do not decide anything about who ultimately wins. That was centered into the middle and just got deflected wide. Lyles dumped it, hoping someone could redirect. Walchuk gets back up to get it. Moves it back out onto the point, goes to the front of the net. Walchuk's the man who's out in front. Billy Garen all the way to the blue line, sends it to him. Walchuk centered, tied up, and Brzezgala couldn't find it. Then there's the whistle, and a penalty behind the play. Huge opportunity for U.S. They're going to have a five on three here, and they're getting a little restless in front of the net. There had to be a call there. It was Alexander Frolov, I believe, that came back in and simply bear hugged this guy to the ice. Billy Guerin. Wait a minute now. There seems to be some now. It's not Team USA is arguing this. There may be two going. Coincidentals. Frolov is definitely going for the Russians. And Billy Guerin has, in fact, made his way to the penalty box, too, for Team USA. There's the hold right there by Frolov. He completely hogtied Guerin in front. Watch the left of your screen. I'll take it back. It wasn't Billy Guerin. It was J.M. Lyles that had pinched to the front of the net. And Billy Guerin got a penalty for coming in and stabbing at the puck once Breeze Golov had it. Oh, that's too bad. That's too bad. That would a great opportunity. That would have been to go up a five or three power play. So matching minors, still 17 seconds left on the power play, which will be a four on three. No. Russian coach here, Billy Letinov. Yeah. He's got a silver medal from the Olympics, besides his seven gold champions or world championships, but he played in 1980 for the Russian team. Part of the miracle that Team USA pulled off involved this man because he played for the giant, great Russian team that went down to defeat in Lake Placid. And you see the guy sitting next to him? Vladimir. Vladimir, Vladimir, the best goaltender ever to play this game. Look out. Leach is the only one back, and the backhander for us, Kavasha. Kavasha could not get a turn to the forehand as Leach came back with him, but he had a pretty good break. Penalty is over. Five on five hockey, one shot on that power play for Team USA, and they remain behind two to one. With 12-17 left to go here in the third period, Madonna. Madonna wanted to drop it, did. He heads to the front of the net, has to come back to get the return pass from Hull. Madonna into the middle shot. Oh, what a great save. Bezgalov. Boy, he is something. Bezgalov on Lyles on a good setup. Poked away at center. Chris Chelios coming in to help. Madonna's already back there. Lyles near side. Dumped back into the middle of the room. Amati couldn't quite kick that to the stick. It's just not getting the bounces right now, U.S. isn't. They've had a couple good opportunities in front of that. They've hit feet. Tony Monti just almost gets in by himself. The puck's just not bouncing their way right now. Now Amati dumped it into the middle. Stand-up check by Kovalenko to take his man off it. Russia gets it back. Shipped to back in by Vizhnevsky, or at least he tried. Whistled. Uh, was hit with a high stick. 11.24 left to go, and Russia's on top. 2-1. to one.
Right about now, the guys on Team USA's bench are saying who's going to be a hero. There is Chris Drury. If you're looking for a big game player, Team USA has a number of them, and Chris Drury is absolutely in that category. Watch out for him here with 11.24 to go in the third. 11 of 26 career playoff goals have been game winners for Drury. 11 out of 26. So you're right, Bill. He's a go-to guy. Right now, they're looking for the one that would tie it up with Russia leading it by a score of 2-1. to one. And continuing to outshoot Team USA 35 to 18. That'll be uh, deflected in. We'll come back out to center for the faceoff. Well, certainly in this game, Russia's answered some questions about how good they are and can they can are they still up there at that competitive level on in the international scene? You know, we talked about the guys that aren't here. Some of the younger guys, including Kovalchuk, said, you know what, basically to hell with them. The guys that don't want to be here, stay away. We want to play, we want to represent our country, and we're going to show the world how hard we're willing to commit to getting the job done. Yep. And I'm pretty impressed in this game. I'm very impressed in this game with their play and with their desire to use the body and get it out in front and do what has to be done. Team USA, plenty of time though to get back. Doug Wade took it behind the net. Tried to center it. Wade's got to follow it up himself. And Wade had a poke checked away. Gonchar followed him from one side of the rink to the other. All the way around that time. Uh, they want to clear the zone, and they do. Samsonov, his shot or pass got deflected near side. Samsonov gets it back. It's set up by Yashin uh, into the corner. Open the way, and Team USA will get it out of there. They'll wave off any icing on it, though. That'll force Wisniewski to come back to play it. Wisniewski with Ralston on him. Team USA, a couple of four checkers in. Russia changing. Chelios over there to take the puck away. And Team USA will change it up as well. Through center, they're getting into dangerous territory, so just dumped it out. Tevodorsky again, bumped ahead, but not out of the zone. Kuchuk's out there. Madonna, Kuchuk Madonna. On a wall, Chuck was already in the zone. They had to come back. Gary, the one area that Team USA thought they might be able to exploit from the Russian team is the defense. Tevrodovsky, Vishnevsky, Volchenkov. They haven't been able to do that at all. Nope. And trying to make another big save. Tough shot that time. That one screams by on the near side. Havanov with a big shot that didn't end up on net. Esch's first one, though, is from a very tough angle. Stick was flying in the air. That was Tevodorsky's, I think, that ended up going all the way nope, down the other end it was Volchenkov who lost his stick he's already back there on D as a result turned back off the far side by Gomez Chelios Gomez came over Chelios they need to move it out of the zone here with 9 12 left to go back into the middle dump in by Rafalski into the corner turn around by Drury to the near side Team USA changing blue line behind this play Hook checked away by Amati Gomez Dumps it back again. Again, cycling, but it's in the corner. Drury. Gomez comes to help, but they lost the puck. That's who cleared it around, but not out. Held back in by Drury. Drury pushes it to the near side wall. A lot of passing, JR, but not any of it in shooting areas. Well, you're not going to score out of the corner. They're doing a lot of they're doing a lot of cycling in the corners, getting it back and forth to each other, but they got to get somebody in front of the net and get that puck to the net in order to get a goal here. They are really struggling right now offensively. But a gang off is cutting back into the middle. They couldn't get it to him. Held by Kolachuk. Kolachuk got it back down low. Look at that pass. What an angle that was. Dotson was trying to move it in. Got Ash down. Shot got blocked by Leach. Straight up in the air. What a great chance. And Team USA is going to just put that one away. Russia on top by a score two to one. Trying to win their first game of this World Cup. Well, just by about a two to one ratio all across the board, including the score, Team Russia ahead of the United States, including in shots, almost a two to one ratio in scoring chances. One for five, the U.S. has gone on the power play, but the score here is two to one. So the scoreboard just about mirrors all of the major numbers underneath the score. It does do that. With Zubris having put him ahead in the first, Kachuk tied it on the power play goal, and now Kovalev at 5.05 from Abanov has put Russia back on top two to one here in the third period with time running out. Esch. Got caught. Brother uh, uh, Rizgalov got caught. He's able to move it out of there. Rizgalov's not wandered very much here in this game. He stayed pretty much in place. Rob moved it back into the zone. Team USA with Waits line out there now. That's related to the puck handling. Yes. If you don't handle the puck very well. What's the point of going and forcing yourself to do it? And the way he makes saves and keeps his balance, why, why do that anyway? Leg Wait wound up, took that shot, but got blocked to the near side wall. But again, off has been spectacular. 
battling along the boards. Number 61 out there. He's going to get a little help from Gonshire. All the mucking that goes on is in Russia's favor now with that clock running. Anything to keep the play at an uneven flow works for them. You don't want it all in their zone, however. Team USA changing it up behind the play. Hull was cutting to the net. The rough pass to wake up block. Move back to center. Could be a two on one. Not quite. Gonshire trying to get there and Chelio speeding. Chelio still in behind the net. Moving in the Datsuk. Datsuk plus Samsonov rather looking for room. Samsonov had it lost it to Madonna. And Madonna's blind pass off the near side wall. Gathered up on a wall shot. He had it bounced away. Look out here. Peck will move in. One back on D. Samsonov. Dang! That one goes wide. Got the glove down. Ash had the shoulder up on it. Shot. Another save. Ash. Rebound. Put back into the middle. High slot area. Russia gets the passing. That was Samsonov in front. Couldn't redirect it. They've done this about a half dozen times in this game where they get going and they just start flying. Kozlov left it in the corner. Madano took it away. Here's how they need a change. He sends it in. 619 left to go. No matter what happens in this game, I am impressed. Russian play. Likewise. And you know, we've talked about Team USA getting the puck in deep like they've got it now, but not being able to pull it off the wall. A great degree of credit belongs to the defenseman for the Russian team, not letting him bring it. That shot deflected to the near side and turned right back out of there. Froloff is just looking into the middle. Rafalski put the hit on. Play by Brian Rafalski. Rafalski the intercept. Oh, look out here. Two on one loss. Rafalski, Yashin. He took that hit, got back up, stole the puck, and had a two on one chance, broke it up. I think Rafalski just really, I think he just uh, benefited from the New Jersey Devil system right there. He didn't go offense, he stayed defense, and luckily he did, or else it would have been a breakaway. Wow. It's going to have to be played. Uh, Ash dumped it off the near side, almost not hard enough to get it around. Uh, Prolog. Still back into the zone. What a job. Right now, Rush is doing as they have Team USA just going in the wrong direction. It's I'll still what, time. I'll tell you what, the fans are starting to get restless, too. They're starting to really get uh, aggravated at what's going on and how well Rush is just dominating this third period. To their credit, Kovalchuk was up there that time, uh, forcing it. That's Waite sending it back in behind the net as Galop holds it up again. Cleared around uh, to the far side point. Good hard wrapper on that time by Kasparitis. And Russia looking for another chance here. Down, uh, Kovalenko was looking in the middle, didn't have anybody. Into the corner, got knocked down, and a penalty coming on Team USA with 4.46 to go. I th That's Kachuk. Power play coming up, and so are the goals. We'll show them to you when we come back. Team Russia about to go on the power play in an attempt to add to their two to one lead. Second period is when the scoring started. Dinah Zubris off the skate of Chris Chelios made it one to nothing. Mike Madano's brilliance on a pass to Keith Kachuk tied it. And in the third period, the Alexei Kovalev show. Two to one Russia right now. And this is the third power play that Russia's had in this game. Don Shire will bounce that one off the boards. They'll start up as Kachuk went for boarding. At 15 14, third power play of the game for Russia, and they could get a put away goal right here. Shot Esh deflected in front of him, may have gone through. That was close. Kozlov was setting the screen. Kozlov, number 25, got right in front. That's Kozlov with the puck, drops it back up onto the point. Near side, Kovalev's playing a point. He's got the goal. Forward out there. Gonchar's the defenseman back on the blue. There's Kovalev. And a lot of room. Kovalev, a wrist of oh, oh, my God, he went with the shot. And he shook his head, just trying to get the cobwebs out. Back to Gonshar, shot, save made again. Gonshar knocks it down. Ash coming up big, but Ash may be wobbling a little bit on that shot to get him in the head. Kovalev looking down low, trying to go all the way across uh, for Samsonov. Back up Gonshar. Gonshar, Lloyd in the blue line. Samsonov in, and a penalty coming. And I, I'm not sure Chris Chelios is going to be part of this, but I do know Kovalchuk is going to go. No, it's Kovalchuk by himself. A little bit of interference. Stood right in front of Chris Chelios. Didn't let him see the player get to get to the puck carrier. When you do that, you're going to get called on every time, especially 2-1 late in the game. Chelios is either accompanying Kovalchuk to the penalty box, or he's gone too. Yikes. A little stick to the ribs. 
I'll tell you what, not, not too many people shoot the puck like Alexei Kovalev, and I've seen him take that shot numerous, numerous times and hit that upper left-hand corner. And I'll tell you what, that hurt SC going off the shoulder. Well, what a finish we've got if this doesn't change, because uh, 53 seconds remaining on the Team USA penalty, 3.36 left to go in the game. So cross-checking calls on Chelios and Kovalchuk. They do both get penalties. So the power play continues with 38 seconds left on it for Russia. Back in their own end here as they look to have it off playing one of the points now. Up comes Madonna. Team USA is going to put heat on to try and get it back. Off the wall, Frolov, Frolov, impressive. Backhander, save action, he will cover. Their transition is just absolutely amazing. The way that they get the puck from the back of the goal line, one pass, two passes, and a good scoring chance on the other end within the five-second span. It's incredible the way these guys get up and down the ice. This team is really performing. Frolov is one of the players who wasn't even supposed to be here. Uh, number 24, we've been watching, played for Los Angeles this past year. 24 goals, 24 assists. He was a replacement player. Some of those other names we talked about said no to coming with his team. That's cleared out of the zone. Because Galov's got plenty of time to get to it, though, to Gonshaw. Dropped it back. Bad pass. Dug away. Backhander. Save again. Oh, man, man. Give away. Galov, four shots. Coming off that power play, but it remains a 2-1 lead for Russia. And now Team USA is going to take some chances. Turning, Kavasha left it shot. Oh, what wide, a save. Wide. I don't believe it. A Fennigan off again. Came straight down the middle. Had nobody there to block it. Fennigan has absolutely been flying here in this game. Again, shot. Save made by Esch. This time on Jubarov. And Russia's this close to getting what would be a probable game-clinching goal. Two more chances to put a little daylight between themselves and Team USA for the Russian group. Maxim Afinogenov from the Buffalo Sabres, and that's really the story of Afinogenov. Fantastic wheels, generate scoring opportunities. If he ever had a finishing touch, he'd be a 40 to 50 goal guy in the NHL. Well, he just can't believe it right now. He's had, what, 10 or 11 shots on net. Almost as many as the whole USA team has had all, all night. The shots now, 44. To 19. He's saying, what do I got to do to get the puck past this kid? 26 scoring chances. That's Two. an incredibly high number. Two to one. Shot. Oh. Score! Kozlov gets it, and it's three to one, Russia. Well, after all of the brilliance, Robert Esch has put in the crease tonight for Team USA. Finally, a victim of one that was right at him, right between the pads through the five hole. Well, if you're going to beat Eshi, this is the place to go to. Go to. You got to go five hole. He's, he's got to be feeling tired here with the barrage of shots that he has. And Kozlov makes a great play, looks off the defenseman, and even looked Eshi off. And I don't think he even thought it was coming. And with as hard as the guys shoot these days, that thing's in the net yeah. before you know it. It really looked like Robert Esh was digging in with the right skate to push over because on the right of your screen, you may see it. No, you can't see it. Alexei Kovalev was there, and that's who I agree with you. That's who I think Robert Esch was more worried about than Kozlov. A three to one lead. Rizgalov blocked that one. A minute 49 left to go. Empty net at the other end. Team USA is leaving it open with just under two minutes to go after that goal. They pulled the goaltender. And now Russia's got a chance to just fire the door if they can find one on the empty net. Empty net, empty net, and Finneganoff might get one now. Yeah. yeah. He's earned one here in this game. The goal picked up by Kozlov. Samsonov the assist at 18.02. And Russia, in what many will consider a major upset here in this World Cup play, has a 3 to 1 lead. For as people who have been watching Russia, however, we talked to some around the rink today, they will not consider it a major upset. Because Russia has impressed people who've watched the scrimmage games. And now Kachuk's going to go again. Yes, he is. He came and put a hit on Gonshar. And now Billy Guerin. Kachuk, Gonshar. And I believe that might, that's Darius Kasparitis with his jersey being pulled over his head. Well, this is total frustration, Alan. You know Keith Kachuk, he's played so hard. And being down 2-2 two, two, uh, oh two in this tournament, you know that he's going to get some frustrations out anytime he can. And he took a, he took a run at Gonshar. As soon as Kasparitis came over to defend his buddy, Keith Kachuk's going to start with that guy, too. It's just going to show the frustration that U.S. has right now. Yeah, and I think, Gary, we talked, you know, you mentioned him. 
an upset. There's the hit. Oh, he got his elbow right up on the Gonchar's face. As much as it is an upset for Russia, and as you mentioned, we're not sure that it's that great an upset. It can, it has to be considered a pretty good setback for Team USA. Absolutely, though. I mean, Absolutely. At, some, at some point, they're going to have to beat somebody. Well, they could have the worst of all situations for the North American whole picture could happen. If they end up playing, if U.S. goes 0-3 and, and Canada wins, Canada plays the U.S. in Canada. And that's the last thing that they wanted to happen because they wanted Canada and U.S. to be in the quarterfinals, one here and one in Canada. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't want that. You don't want that. Not now. Tomorrow, the World Cup of Hockey continues. ESPN, ESPN2 at 1 Eastern. It'll be Jager, the Czech Republic against Germany. 7 ESPN2. This U.S. team in what looks like it's going to be a real need-to-win game. We'll take on Slovakia. That's 7 on ESPN2 tomorrow night. Our coverage of the World Cup of Hockey continues. And no one will be more upset than the folks here in Minnesota where the ticket sales and who shows up for that game to be played here as a quarterfinal will depend uh, directly on whether Team USA is involved in that game or not. The Team they, USA doesn't want to play Canada and they certainly don't want to have to go to Canada to play them. No, but the huge game will be the one tomorrow night against Slovakia. Yes. yes. If U.S. can finish one or two, then none of those problems we're discussing take place. Or even three. Or even as long three. as they avoid Canada. That's right. But this has been, I mean, Esch has played another outstanding game in net for Team USA. That last goal, one he, I'm sure, will say, should have been able to stop that. Couldn't do it. But Bizgalov at the other end has been even better. He hasn't had to make as many or as spectacular the number of saves, but he has been very solid. When he's had to be, you bet he has. 24 years old. I've been impressed with Russia's overall team play. Their defensive play has been fantastic. You see guys coming back, back checking, back checking, all the way back almost into the goal line. It's taken away every offensive opportunity that U.S. has had tonight. But that's also one of the knocks that, that has been leveled against the Russian team, and accurately so, that they're not glued that tightly together. Great individual talent don't play as a team. They've played as, as one here. I think that's coming together yes. here in this World Hockey Tournament. Power play underway. Russia's got a chance to add another. That one shot or passed uh, through the crease. Only 30 seconds left to go. Five minutes where the penalties put up on the board against Team USA. Off the fire uh, side. Blake will move it back in. So Russia will come away with a victory here. And uh, we're under 20 seconds now. Keith Kachuk at five. Elbowing. Garen. Minor. Roughing. And uh, we may have more going. There's Blake over there, the Minnesota native. On the and our Kasparaitis friend again. Always in the middle. Did I tell you that not too many people like Darius Kasparaitis in now, Jean I think I heard that. I'm showing it again right now. And apparently, Blake is one of those. Oh, but I think Blake, he's five foot five, but he's as tough as nails. He wants a piece of him now. A New York Islander and a former New York Islander. Kasparaitis, the former New York Islander. Look at that face. Is that a warrior face or what? My goodness. Blake 55. Come here. Oh, Kasparaitis got the first good lick in. I thought Blake had gone after, after Kasparaitis. Well, he did, but not before he got face mushed. He pulled his right oh. in. He pulled him right in with a, with a fist up. 7.5 seconds left to go. Kasparitis will go to the box here, and it's now just a matter of running out this time as Russia, in its first game played in this World Cup of Hockey, is going to come away with the victory. Team USA is now 0-2, and Russia's 1-0. Russia 3, USA 1. Wow. That's going to be the final, and for Team USA, pretty well dominated. Let's take you back to Dave and Barry. All right, there it is, Barry. The U.S. now 0-2. They scored a grand total of two goals in two games. What's the problem? Well, it's not the loss that bothers me. It's how the loss happened, and that they were totally outplayed. They were totally outplayed physically, too. If you watch the Russians earlier in the period and in the third period when they took over, they won the battles in the corner. They were coming out with a puck. JR and Billy mentioned over and over again, draws. Uh, Russia dominated on draws. That's just a case of uh, not being ready to play. For some reason, the Americans have had two terrible first periods, one against Canada, one against the Russians. Esh is the only reason the games were close 
close going into the second period where the Americans played better. But in the third period, the Russians took over and dominated. So the Americans got some soul searching. The good news is that this first round is all about seeding. As long as they beat Slovakia, everything's fine. They'll play Russia or Canada in the first round uh, in the next round. But uh, again, the way they lost, they weren't competitive. They weren't fast. Uh, they didn't look quick at all. And they didn't look as hungry as the Russians. Russians won all the physical battles, which shouldn't happen against the North American team. Coach, it sets up a great game tomorrow night. Oh. Slovakia and the U.S. This is a huge game to avoid playing Canada in Canada, as Gary Thorne had mentioned earlier. And there is that fine line between age and experience. Here's how the game looked. It was a 3-0 game earlier today. Finland beating Germany. Back-to-back -back shutouts for Mika Kiprasov. Very solid team, the Finns. They're all good defensive. They're all good offensive. They can score when there is a breakdown. Their power play was good. Timo Solani scored a big goal. Germany competed hard, though. And here's what it means up to the second standings. We can tell you Russia on the board now 1-0. Canada, of course, leading the North American pool 2-0. Sweden and Finland, oh, that's going to be a great one as well. Nobody thought the defending ch uh, champions from 96 would be 0-2 right now. You have to think they're going to beat the Russians tonight. Sets up a great day five at the World Cup of Hockey. Czech Republic and Germany, both those teams 0-2. They need a win. 1 o'clock Eastern on ESPN, and then the United States and Slovakia game we've been talking about, and now it anticipating. It just got bigger. It just got bigger. 7 o'clock Eastern. Hope you enjoy the World Cup of Hockey. Barry Melrose, David Amber, Gary Thorne and the gang, we all say thanks for watching. Coming up next, Barry, how about a little college football? Love college football since I never went to college. Keep it locked right here. TCU Northwestern.